football here on ABC. The Michigan Wolverines started out the year as a team many thought would come out of the Big Ten. But Michigan State has survived, and they have risen and risen and risen. John Saunders. Along. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say, you're going with Michigan big on this one here. Hey, Drew Stanton's a quarterback that everybody's talking about in America right now. That's saying, hey, a Heisman Trophy candidate for sure. This offense explodes because of Drew Stanton. That win against your Irish, Aaron, was incredible. The poise, the touch. He also has courage on the ground. He can run the football. But I'll tell you what I like about Michigan State's offense. The fact that they have scored on 16 of their first 21 offensive drives this season. They start fast. Drew Stanton starts fast, and that offense is going to be hard to deal with. I'll tell you what, uh, Drew Stanton's not the only quarterback they're talking about in the state of Michigan. They're talking about Chad Henney as well, and the things they're saying aren't very nice. But it's not on all on Henney's shoulders. you got to remember, he lost tight end Tim Massaquai and running back Michael Hart very early on. Those are uh, two players at two positions that a quarterback needs. Then you fold into that offensive line injuries. Then on top of that, you have a Braylon Edwards, uh, Braylon Edwards, John's favorite player, mm -hmm. uh, list receiver core, and you have a lot of pressure on a young quarterback that didn't have that before. So Michigan right now struggling two and two, struggling for his yep. Big Ten life. There's pressure all over the place today, and we'll be following some of it at noon. This game right A great day for a little tailgating prior to the Battle of Michigan. Big question with the Wolverines running back Mike Hart working out before they went in to put the pads on. What do you hear? A great day for a little tailgating prior to the Battle of Michigan. Big question with the Wolverines running back Mike Hart working out before they went in to put the pads on. What do you hear down below, Jack Aroot? Well, Brent, that pregame warm-up was so critical. Offensive coordinator Terry Malone looked Mike Hart over and at the end of the warm-up said, well, are you ready? Mike Hart winked back and said, I'm all ready. Always ready for Michigan State. He will start today. All right, Jack, thank you. With my partner, Gary Danielson, another story involving Michigan. Steve Bruston can't go today because of a shoulder injury. You know, Brent, uh, of the two stories, I think Steve Breston, you never want to lose a football player. You know that. But, you know, the, he's replaceable. They have some guys in depth at wide receiver. I think Mike Hart is more important to this offense for a few reasons. He doesn't turn the ball over. He's a better receiver, and he's a better pass protector. That should make Chad Henney a better player. What about Drew Stanton, the all-everything quarterback at Michigan State? There's no tougher player in college football defense right now than Drew Stanton. With his legs and his arm, he is an emerging superstar in college football. You know, there's been one problem for the Wolverine defense dating back to last year at Ohio State. Yeah, it really has. It started with Drew Stanton against Michigan State, and it went from there. Troy Smith, Ohio State, showed that a mobile quarterback in a spread offense gave them problems. We saw it in the Rose Bowl with Vince Young. And then, ironically enough, last week, Wisconsin and John Stucco, he scores the winning touchdown. Michigan State won the toss, and folks, they did not defer. That's a story to begin with. They said, let us have the football with this high-powered attack, and they will come out on the 20-yard line. So we have been talking about number five, Drew Stanton. And he has really emotional feelings about playing Michigan, Gary. You know, he, he grew up not liking Michigan. And, you know, Brent, sometimes there's an inferiority complex at Michigan State. Not with this guy playing quarterback. He doesn't like him, and he's told his whole team he's the leader. The first play, they script eight prior to the game. And they will open up with that shotgun look as you look down on this gorgeous Saturday here in East Lansing. Not a seat to be had. Both bands are here. And on first down, the offensive line gives Stanton plenty of time. Can't find an open receiver. Dancing. And finally, at the 21-yard line, the completed pass to Terry Love, the sophomore wideout. So, the Ameriprise starting lineup, and here are the fellows who have been making it happen. Brennan Teague, one of three running backs, Woods, Scott, and Brown for the Spartans. Uh -huh. Behind this offensive line, and this may be the most underrated offensive line in the Big Ten, it is anchored by Chris Morris. He is the all-everything center. From the deep eye here on second and long, they come back 
with the running attack, probing the middle of this Wolverine defense. That's Reeve May up front. Allen Branch has made a huge, huge difference for the Wolverines. Gabe Watson, of course, will get a lot of playing time. The four linebackers and Lamar Woodley, number 56. The Michigan State coaches charted all the games. They've got to keep an eye on him. Paul, Berenger, Engelman, and Mason in that backfield. The bad news is Mason leads the Wolverines in tackles. You don't like to see that from a cornerback. They stack three wide at the bottom of your screen. On third down, Stanton rolls in that direction. Fires a diving reception. First down, Michigan State. As Stanton converts his first third down, hitting Jeremy Scott from Jupiter, Florida. Drew Stanton is like the ugly duckling who's turned into the beautiful swan as a thrower. You see him, you will never know from snap to snap where he's going to throw the football from. He came to Michigan State as a passer, he turned into a runner, and now he's a passer again. What a developing superstar. 18 yards throwing, puts the ball on the 43-yard line. Stanton with an empty backfield. Look at the offensive line. Plenty of time, middle, incomplete, through high. So, John L. Smith, the uh, coach, was talking about uh, the, the team and what he's putting on the field, and especially Stanton's makeup. He's a tough guy. You, you know, he's a, he's a linebacker type guy. He's a guy that you want leading your team, and he's not afraid to grab a face mask and, and shake a head or two. And that's what we like to see. He has indeed provided leadership as well as quarterback skill as he rolls the pocket to the left. Now dancing away from trouble, trying to avoid the sack, and he is down. Could not get out of the way as Pat Massey, the senior, 283-pound senior, number 94, in for the Wolverines. That's a loss of 13 yards on the sack. You know, Michigan has kind of mixed it up here with their defense early in this football game, rushing three players on first down on both of the first downs, but on second and third down, coming with four guys. That time, Lamar Woodley turned that play back in, and the Michigan secondary is very, very comfortable covering right now. Let's see if that stands up. On this substitution package, Massey off to the sideline. There's the 3-4 okay. look. Gary referred to they keep a protector for Stanton and now they send him out into the pattern and again the receivers are well covered fires middle got him complete at midfield Stanton comes back and finds the wideout Kyle Brown the senior who has been so efficient number three for the Spartans and that is short of the first down yeah, it will bring up a fourth a down deep zone that time and this is the first time I think Brent that Steve Preston will have a bigger factor in the punt game and special teams. Brandon Fields drills the punt. And Leon Hall, and it goes out of bounds. They were practicing this Steve Preston punt. And <laughs> even without him on the field, they go for the boundary, out of bounds. A terrific punt by Fields, a 49-yarder out of bounds. So Chad Henney. And the Wolverines will have very difficult field position. Now, what about Henny's sophomore problem? Well, look at this. If you look behind his statistics a little bit more, at first glance, they're pretty good. But if you break them down between the first half and the second half, you can clearly see he's struggling in the second half. You cannot be a championship football team with a quarterback who struggles in the second half. So Mike Hart, after that warm-up that Jack and Root told us about, is opening as the tailback. from the two-yard line. Immediately, Hart. And he may have got half a yard, and here's our Ameriprise lineup. So when the season began, this the big three. No Breston here today. Hart went down earlier with an injury, but we don't have Breston oh, in Mike the lineup. Oh, Mike Fulton, that was the wrong guy. I'm sorry there, Fred. <laughs> Chad Henney, of course, uh, has been slumping. Ecker and Massacoy, the two tight ends. Avant and Mario Manningham, a freshman wideout. One at INT for GD. From the blimp, up above Henney, firing complete, and he brings it out beautifully. Close to a first down is Carl Tab, number 17. Let's see how they spot it. It'll be just short. 
He's going to have to pick up a yard here on uh, you can see the distance that they still have to go here for the first down the yellow marker on your screen and he breaks the huddle for the Wolverine. Four man defensive front. Hart for the first down breaks free. Cuts the open field, 40, 45, 50, and run down at the 44-yard line. Mike Hart making a difference before the sophomore bandit linebacker, Sir Darian Adams, number 27, tracked him down a 45-yard gain. And right up the middle of the Michigan State defense, it had almost eight, nine guys up there. Look at the end of this play, though. Did Mike Hart kind of favor that hamstring at the end? Watch right at the end of this thing. If he doesn't kind of blow a tire there, let's watch that at the end of the play. Kevin Grady checks into the game. And, and I think the coaches might have saw that also. A terrific block at the line of scrimmage by Hennigy. Number 65, Leo Hennigy, sprung that play open. Now the freshman... Grady will see his first action, and he will put it in the air on first down, and he gets it outside to Mario Manningham, the six-foot freshman, and the coaches think he has a tremendous upside. He runs patterns, Gary, they say, as well as anybody on the Wolverine roster. Well, there's no doubt if you watch this guy in warm-ups, he just looks like a wide receiver, comfortable running routes, and that play right there is just between the receiver and the quarterback. If the defense plays off too far, Henny will just look out there, make eye contact, and throw the ball. The other nine players do not know it's a pass. Here's Henny on that long handoff, and Hart back on the field. You know, we asked Chad Henny, Jack Root traveled to Ann Arbor last Monday, the mood of this team with those two losses. Right now, we're down. I mean, uh, we're not where we want to be right now. Uh, but we're going to work our hardest to get uh, where we need to be. But a couple of things have given Henny and the Wolverines an early lift. Number one, especially, is Mike Hart, who rolled through on that 45-yard gain. There didn't seem to be an injury problem. They took him out for a breather. Now it is second down and nine. Antonio Bass, another of the youngsters they like on this team, and they will show motion with Bass going through the formation. And he's firing very accurately for another first down and he hits Tyler Ecker the tight end and uh, John what's happening with uh, the long I thought that game was in Austin uh, obviously in Missouri and the horns go ahead so we'll be checking in with you here we are in the red zone now for the Wolverines and here's Henny firing too high and uh, he didn't have Braylon Edwards down there to catch yeah. that one Jason Avant uh, the 6-1 senior I I think back to that classic classic game in Ann Arbor a year ago when Braylon Edwards went airborne and here now is uh, that offensive line and we stopped, talked about Hennigy number 65 remember now they were without Jake Long perhaps for the season although he has not been ruled out Riley Lynch Krause Hennigy and Stenovich coming together now as a group second down and 10 for Henny. four down linemen actually they stand up on the right side of the defense and a blitz linebacker blitz hit throws into it a beautiful read by the quarterback and Avon a possession receiver from Carver High School in Chicago to the 11 yard line now defensively and this is a group that has to prove itself Brandon McKinney he drew a start the coaches thought he was overweight a year ago they trimmed him down to a svelte 313 Clifton Ryan is the big man in that group there are your linebackers David Heron Jr. once was the fullback in high school for Maurice Corret. Penny is way out here on this play. Antonio Bass is the quarterback. And he picked it up. So Antonio Bass runs for the first down on the little bit of trickery yep. by the Wolverines as Lloyd Carr and the staff decide to empty out the playbook and it was a great call because if a running quarterback gives you cover for trouble you take a former high school quarterback bass and put him in at that same spot to get the first down this is a big message for the spartan defense this Absolutely. drive started back on the two-yard line and they have driven all the way to the spartan two-yard line now hart is back on the field it would be a big lift for the wolverines if they can score in their first drive Avon, touchdown, Michigan. 
working the corner of the end zone against the small defensive backs for the Spartans. And now Michigan serves notice. They're an underdog and they're unranked, but they're not quite dead yet. Too many weapons on this drive for Michigan. And when you're throwing the ball the way Chad Henney was anticipated to throw the ball this year, and about the way he can catch the ball, you know that Michigan's offense is still tough to stop. Garrett Reedus hammers home the extra point for Michigan. Nat Gutierrez is holder, and here is the touchdown as we head for a break. Michigan State off a terrific punt. Thought they had the Wolverines sealed up back on their own two yard line, but they drove 98 yards. And now Diego Okendo will let this one go deep in the end zone, take a knee. It'll come out again on the 20. So Ross Ryan kicking off very well here in college football on ABC. You couldn't ask for a nicer day for a football game here, folks, than what we've got in East Lansing. And uh, Stanton comes back out with the offense. Remember last year, these two battled through three overtimes before Braylon Edwards put the Wolverines ahead in that third overtime. And now Drew Stanton and the Spartans need to answer the bell. That inside handoff, and they're going to try to run a little bit downhill with the freshman, Javon Rio. Well, if you look at these two teams, what they need to do, I think it's a little bit of the same. They do not want to have a lot of third and longs. Protect the quarterback a little bit different in the pocket for Henny, and they don't want Stanton to take a lot of hits. And come on, we all know that in the Michigan-Michigan State team game, the team that runs the ball effectively wins it. So far, Michigan has got off that running game. You have looked down on one of our great settings in all of college football. The offensive line doing its job to stand and find open men through to double coverage that time and it was almost picked off by Grant Mason the senior cornerback there were two defenders back there as Stanton fired it to Gary up early I know you watching the defensive backs but it looks to me like the Michigan State receivers have been well covered they have it's been a lot of zone so far from this Michigan defensive backs I think this is a busted route this time the receiver keeps going and uh, Drew Stanton throws it in the slot that's a miscommunication from this wide open spread offense but Allen Branch, Brett, number 80, was right in Stanton's face again. The state coaches to a man said this would be the best defense they've played so far this year. And Drew Stanton has to dance again. About the third time he's been on the run, sacked once. Gets away from pressure. Can he throw it away? <laughs> Dropped. But it's an incomplete. There's a penalty flag. A penalty flag thrown there on the sideline. Boy, they, I think they might have called this on Behringer number 19 as a late hit, but I think that's questionable. Behringer doesn't know that that's going to be a drop ball on that play. Let's see if they pick it up. Matt Trannon, their basketball player, and the wideout dropped it on the sideline. and uh, He'd been enjoying his best season right, so far today, but he certainly should have hung on to that they're ball gonna pick that as up. our referee now, Dennis Lipsky. There is no foul on the play. That's good call by the crew. You can see Trannon is the guy as Drew Stanton again is forced to do too much on this play. This offense does not work like this. Give Michigan's defensive line credit. Trannon is open. He's 6'6". It's a perfect throw. And you can see it was called a late hit, but I think that's a great pickup. They are having a hard time. The Spartans are blocking Lamar Woodley. And a low returnable punt. Brandon Fields is scooped up by Leon Hall, who has replaced Bruston, who's out with an injury. And the Wolverines are going to have superb field position. So the underdog, folks, is howling loudly right now in East Lansing. Beware a wounded Michigan, at least so far. With my two amigos, Gary Danielson, Jack Aroot, I'm Brent Musburger. Just a great, great set. If you like to go to different ballparks, folks, to see a college football game, come by East Lansing. They've done a great job remodeling this uh, arena. They lowered the playing surface. Not a bad seat in the house. Very intimate. Just a beautiful place. Mike Hart, who gave the Wolverines a huge lift with that 45-yarder, back in at running back. And here he comes again, trying to swing to the right. And... Uh, 
Jack, I know you've been uh, talking to Coach uh, Malone down there. He means a lot to this team. Yeah, and I asked him, was it his production as a as a running back? He said no. He said every time that Mike Hart comes into the game, there's a spark on the offensive line, a spark in the secondary, even a spark from Chad Henney. Maybe it's because Henney and Hart were so magical one year ago with a little help from Braylon Edwards. He said that's why I wanted to get him in the starting lineup. Not for his production as much, for his spark. How about that, Jerry? Yeah, that, that's, that's amazing. Too. You know, Michigan hasn't fumbled a lot, but two key fumbles have cost them losses. Yes, they have. Big time fumble. Play fake by Henny. Pocket holds. Fires. Touchdown. We'll walk in this time. It's Mario Manningham, the freshman. 43 yards. This is a stunned Spartan Stadium. Two positions and two touchdowns. And hail to the victors. Watch the free safety clear. fight on the play right up there. Free safety's on the middle of the field. You got one-on-one -on -one to the outside. There's Manningham right there. What a route runner. Watch him patient inside. That's way too easy. And that's exactly why Notre Dame was able to throw for 487 yards against the secondary. Gutierrez puts it down for Revis. And, folks, there's one way to take a crowd out. You hear it all the time. It's a cliche. But Lloyd Carr and the Wolverines have done just that. It's 14-0, the underdog, Michigan leads. 7.03 to go, and Michigan has silenced the Michigan State faithful, at least for the time being, folks. It's a long, long way to go. Demond Williams, the corner who was not out there defending will return this kickoff he's the deep man but you're not getting any returns against the wolverines wolverines are executing beautifully in all phases and gary another tough day for number 31. yeah Jaron hayes now watch his hips everyone on this play right here he's okay he's okay up right there when he turns his hips manningham is very patient on the route when he turns his hips he is beat it's a perfect throw an easy throw on the post and manningham a freshman i said he's a very good route runner really turned around Jerron Hayes. Well, I go back to last year. Braylon Edwards beat on Jerron Hayes. He has dreamed of having this game. Uh, he was suspended for a time for John L. Smith. Now he gives up that touchdown to Manningham. And Michigan State finally sets the screen with the freshman Ringer. And Ringer is down at the 25-yard line. So it'll be second down and about five. Now, what the Spartans have to be here, Gary, they have to be patient. They can't allow themselves to get two down, and you say number five will not let them get that no, far and, down. No, and as a quarterback, you got to tell your team right now that, listen, we're going to score points. I'm telling you we're going to score points. Chad he has got me right now. Start off fast. Give me some time. I need to have that line blocked a little bit, and we'll find some holes in that secondary. Using 39 ringer again, the five-foot, nine-inch freshman, Dave Harris the linebacker who steps who like. up in there and this is a uh, this is an improved defensive yep. front for the uh, Wolverines we all remember what Vince Young and the Longhorns did to them in the uh, in the Rose Bowl now number 56 so far I see the big Gabe Watson is out there he didn't start along with Massey but there folks is a star waiting to happen number 56 and everybody who plays the Wolverine tries to chart where they're gonna put him and they move him around from spot to spot so you can see as he sits down on this third down conversion he'll try to get a rush on it. Stanton off the play fake great time fires first down complete to Kyle Brown the senior wideout and uh, John what's happening uh, with Missouri well the underdogs doing pretty well John here in both arenas 14-0 huh? here Michigan leading They'll run the toss play on first down and uh, nothing doing. You can see the Wolverine defense. Alan Branch, the 311-pound sophomore, was amongst that group. He has made a huge difference in this defensive he front. Yes, and Alan Branch and Gabe Watson are both in the game. That's the look that Michigan State anticipated. You can anticipate it all you want. It's tough to block it. And that time he ran right through the block by Nobelski. And that is the type of push that Branch is giving this defense with the added speed at linebacker for Michigan, this is a good Big Ten defense this year. Now, J.U. Kulkrick, the big back, has checked in. Dropped, and that is another drop. This one by Kyle Brown. Matt Trannon, remember, dropped one on the sideline. And, of course, this is the first half of our double. Expectations is what create pressure. 
And in this football game, the expectations are that Michigan State would roll it up. You can see that this football team is not used to it. Stanton rolling the pocket to the left. Turns completely around. Fires deep middle. Got a man. Complete. And he puts it back in Jeremy Scott's hands. And that will be a first down in Wolverine territory. And now for the first time, the Spartans are mounting a serious scoring threat. Watch Drew Stanton. He looks left. He looks back to his right. Then he comes down the middle of the field, keeps his feet moving, and delivers the ball. That's a quarterback. It's not pretty. I'll guarantee you. He's not a pretty thrower, but he's used to this offense, and he's delivering the ball. He's playing better than his teammates right now. Stanton is thrown for 87 yards and Henny for 85. Jason Teague is back in. He gets the toss. Stayed outside. Pats first down. And banged at the 18-yard line by Brandon Engelman. The junior safety up to get Jason Teague. He's the senior of the three-headed running back trio. When we talked to the Michigan State coaches yesterday and Thursday, they said they felt they were going to probe this Michigan defense inside out. That has not worked. You can see already that Michigan State has changed, and they're going outside. And here's a little changeup. Stanton now is out in the flank, and a different person is in at quarterback. I'm not sure who That's it is Jeremy yet. Scott. Yep. And Scott from Dwyer High School in South Florida carries it from that shotgun look. So what's good for the goose is good for the yep. gander. And Berenger making the stop for the Wolverines. But the Spartans are now marching toward the end zone. You know, that's how important Drew Stanton is to this football team. A year ago, they would have put Stanton in to run that play. But now they don't want him taking a lot of shots. So they make the switch and put in the receiver to run the quarterback draw. Now first end goal. Straight ahead with the big back, Cole Crick, 245 pounds of running back there, number 30, folks. And the coaches all week long were hopeful here at East Lansing that they could get Cole Crick into the game and start to run downhill. They said he has not played up to his potential, and I'm somewhat surprised now that they take him out, but I suppose it depends on whatever play they have called here from the four-yard line as the Spartans have marched better than 70 yards. They trail it by two touchdowns. This would lift the spirits considerably in East Lansing. Here's the running quarterback. Five touchdown. Drew Stanton, who when he couldn't quarterback this team, volunteered for the punt coverage unit. You could see his aggressiveness as he dove to the end zone. Power off tackle with the quarterback. This is the old wing T football. He's running the ball right at you. What a football player. Made the mental decisions, delivered the ball, and ran the ball into the end zone like a fullback. That's what I mean. And ran right over a Michigan defender to get in there. So we have an injured player down on the team, down on the field right now. John Goss awaits the attempt for the uh, extra point. There's the training staff. There's there's the hero, the cover boy here in East Lansing, the 6'3 junior, Harrison High School in Farmington Hills, Michigan. I mentioned that punt coverage, folks. In an Alamo Bowl game against Nebraska, he was hit from the back, suffered a major knee injury, and that prior to the start of last season. But you can watch the aggressiveness here. End zone, here I come. And the injured player is Prescott Burgess. He's the junior outside linebacker and uh, appears to be all right. He was shaken up on the play. Well, and now it'll be John Goss on to attempt the uh, the extra point here with uh, Chris Morris. The regular center will snap it. And Everyone figured it would take check that four Brandon touchdowns. Will be, the, will be the hold. Perfect. So it's a one touchdown game and uh, just what you said it's Absolutely. going to be a long thought, day for both defenses. Absolutely. I thought they had to do it and they did score. Timeout at East Lansing. How much does Spartan quarterback Drew Henson dislike the Michigan Wolverines? But when the EA Sports NCAA 06 football game came out, he saw Desmond Howard, Ice Cream Trophy winner from Michigan out. What did he do? He tore off the cover. He just plays with the black box. Jack, it's in the game. 
So there is Stanton. He's put the Spartans on the board. Gave this crowd a huge lift. And the Wolverines, in case you just joined us, are without Preston. Carl Tabb and Grant Mason. There's Tabb, number 17, back deep. And Dr. Goss is the kickoff man here, fielded by Tabb. Looking for a seam. Out at the 30-yard line. Gary, how about the cheap rushing playbook? Well, we talked about Mike Hart and how important he was to be able to run the football, but he needed some help. That offensive line blew him off, and Brian Thompson, watch the fullback. He gets manned up and they just run iso that's an old bow play iso right up it right up michigan state and michael hart gets to the outside and makes a big running play the biggest rushing play of the year for michigan pressure is on this spartan defense folks michigan is averaging better than 12 yards a play so far in this game they've outrushed them 65 25 the corners have been under pressure. And with the corners backing way off, they just put it in the freshman's hands. And that time, Ashton Watson, the senior corner. But you can see how soft the cushion is on your screen. Henny sees that, and he just flips it to the wide out. And that time, he picked up three yards. Well, aerial coverage for the game, courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse here for the Blue and Onion One at sporting events throughout the year. Henny is under center. There's the shift. They package the wide outs and they'll run behind them this time. Mike Hart jammed up a little bit. And the Spartans very aggressive that time at the point of attack. Now I know if you're a, a Michigan fan, you're looking at that secondary and going, why are we even wasting a running play here? Because that Michigan secondary is very vulnerable out there. Their corners cannot cover man-to-man, -man, meaning they're going to have to drop additional people. I still think you got to give them a taste of the run to keep them honest. But right now, Chad Hitty's looking over and saying, let me throw. I can do it all day. Inside of a minute and a half here in the opening quarter, Michigan 14, Michigan State 7. Third down and five, and now Hitty will go airborne. Fired back. Incomplete ball should have been caught. It was dropped that time by Tim Massacoy, and of course there's a reason why. He has, you can see what right hand broke the wrist, and there is no question about it with that cast on his right arm that that affected his catching ability and certainly gives him an excuse. He wouldn't use it, but uh, he's normally very reliable on a pass like that. Fourth down and five now. Ross Ryan. Brown is back deep for the spot. Fair catch at the 34-yard line. And so with a minute to go in the opening quarter. Well, when you're having a great offense, there. no matter where you get the football, you're scoring. Now, I admit, not a lot of great teams they've played so far, but this team doesn't even kick a lot of field goals. They've been just putting touchdowns on the board and have not gotten the ball with a turnover inside the 20 to start this season through these uh, games and into the Big Ten. J.U. Kulkrak now checks in. He's number 30 as the running back. This is what they eventually, the Spartan coaches, wanted to get to against this defensive front. That's what they were looking for. Downhill and Kulkrick powers across the 45-yard line. That, folks, is a big part of the game plan. 22 yards for him. Dave Baldwin, the offensive coordinator upstairs, got to him. And up front, that offensive line is experienced, led by Chris Morris, their center number 51. He got a little a handful of shirt that time on the Michigan defender Harris but no call no harm and that time Michigan State runs the ball right up the gut of that defense now ringer the freshman he's more of the outside the dash youngster there's the play fake to him by Stanton draws complete Kyle Brown and 
and the Spartans are on the move again with this wide open, high powered offense. What a beautifully designed play by Michigan State that time. They fake the counter. Watch him fake the counter. And then Chris goes right down. Kyle Brown goes right down to the middle of the hashes, sets, and another strike by Drew Stamp. He's a baseball pitcher. We heard that. And he is delivering nothing but strikes. They put Scott in the backfield alongside the quarterback. They toss it to Jeremy. Looking to throw it. Fires it downfield. Intercepted at the goal line and then fumbled. Michigan has the ball if they call possession. If they call the clean intercept, back on the one, but they seem to be jumping in there, waving it off. Incomplete. I agree with Lloyd. I thought it was a clean interception well, on the one-yard line. Berenger was the player. I thought he fumbled, and Michigan re-recovered. However, we will take another look at it because sometimes the first impression's the wrong one. Dwayne Holmes, number 81, comes from behind. Remember, the official will err on the side of a fumble. One, two steps. He clearly knocks it up. Reviewable, of course. And the officials will err on the side of a incomplete pass because they can change it. But that one was clearly in possession of the Michigan player that time, Berenger. Nothing has been stopped, and there it is. A whistle down on the field. Jim Augustine, an outstanding replay official, is up next to us, and Michigan wants to give him more time to take a look at this. From that view, it appeared as though he had the interception with the ball in the right hand. Now, just to throw another little fact in here, Brent, though, if the whistle blew as an incomplete pass, it's a dead ball. It cannot be reviewed. So if the official is saying it's an incomplete pass right there and blows his whistle, he cannot review this because the whistle would have blown. You would think that Dennis Lipsky would be over on the phone telling them that immediately if that had been the case, Gary. However, with the timeout, he clearly Lloyd had. Carr and Michigan have given Jimmy Augustine a moment to look at that replay. Yeah. Well, he clearly had the football. So now you question whether the whistle was blown and was it reviewable? They are going over to the Michigan sideline and uh, explaining to them. Previous play is being reviewed. Good timeout by Lloyd Carr. He wants it. It's a huge play. That was a big timeout because John L. Smith had the Spartans at the line of scrimmage and ready to go again. And uh, now we will have Dennis Lipsky. He'll come over and talk to Jim Augustine. And uh, let me remind you of, uh, this is, gee, just such a terrific day. Michigan intercepted this ball. Let's hope the whistle didn't blow to change this. He has it, he tucks it away, and gets it knocked away. I, In my mind, for fairness, I hope this gets reviewed. Uh, the Return. replay booth is uh, is upstairs, and again, uh, it's right off, uh, right off in here yep. is where Jimmy Augustine is looking at it, right over there, because he's running the replays uh, back and forth and uh, taking a uh, closer look. I dare say, Gary, if there had been a whistle, they, they would have told him about that right away. They would not have even gone to replay because it uh, it would have been dead and incomplete. Right. But if it, the only other call, Brent, that it could have been was incomplete pass, and if that was the call, the official should have blown the whistle. I saw the back judge run up to about the 20-yard line after the recovery of the uh, fumble now, if you will, if uh, Michigan had the ball. And he was waving incomplete pass almost immediately in the sequence. We've got four seconds to go. Just to give you a quick review, of course, there's no coaches protest. Uh, Michigan, under no circumstance, will get this timeout back. Uh, it is up to the replay official up here in the booth. He has to check every play in the game. I think it is somewhat misleading, and I suppose I'm as responsible as any other announcer. We say that's being replayed. Well, everything's being replayed in the way it has uh, been drawn up. Uh, it has to be indisputable evidence up here in the booth for... Uh, Augustine and Lloyd Carr, he's offering indisputable evidence on the field. <laughs> he's talking to Harris and the officials. And, and I think he's what he's telling Harris to get out there, lobby. But the one thing you got to tell your defense if it goes against you, get ready to play. Don't have a letdown. Yeah, you know, we, we talked to Lloyd about uh, getting emotional on the sideline with the officials. Here's what he said Sometimes uh, uh, it gets emotional, but. Uh, I don't I don't think it's anything that uh, 
is a lot of fun most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think Lloyd is finding this fun right now most of the time. But he's given a pretty good lecture down there. Uh, on the, he'll, give, he'll give the official a shave and a haircut. <laughs> but uh, but I agree with Gary. I, I thought from the naked eye clearly that the ball had been intercepted on the one and then a fumble. And well, the crowd a little bit restless about this wait right now. It's taking so long exactly, I think, because of the question about the whistle. Because to me, it's indisputable that it was a fumble. Now the whistle has to be factored into it. Now they also have to get the spot where the ball was recovered, you know. The ball had been taken back to the line of scrimmage for the Spartans, so they would have to also identify Yard where line. the Wolverines would get the ball. Now this is, this is a, a very long discussion. Dennis Lipsky. And one of the fine uh, Big Ten officials down on the field. Uh, the, the key really is to get things like this right. And uh, we talked to Lipsky about it before the game, and every official agrees with that. There is indisputable video evidence that showed Michigan intercepted the pass and then fumbled the ball and then recovered the ball. It's Michigan's ball, first and 10, 13 yard line. You cannot argue with that. No. And remember that Lloyd Carr was burned by instant replay in the Notre Dame game when clearly his quarterback Chad Henney had fumbled and the Irish came away with it. Now John L. Smith, it's uh, probably his turn to be in that, but it was a good call. No, John, it, John L. Smith, I just read his lips. He said that whistle blew before the ball was recovered. That's all he was arguing, not that whether it was intercepted or not. He said that whistle blew, and that's the question, but it turned out the way it is. Well, if the whistle blew before the, oh, I don't want to get into it. It still didn't rule off the interception. The interception counts, and the ball is out on the 13-yard line, and we'll move on now. Chad Hitting, four down linemen for the Spartans. They trail it only by seven. And Hitting gets protection. Deep right, got an open Avod. The very sure-handed wide receiver pulls in another one as we come to the end of the first quarter. So the underdog Wolverine travel to East Lansing. Avon has already scored one of their two touchdowns. Chad Henney is off to a strong start. The Spartans are digging in. We got a great one brewing in the Big Ten. Sixty-five degrees, a little heated neighborhood rivalry with Jack Aroot and Gary Danielson. I'm Brett Musburger. Already a little controversy here unfolding. Uh, Wolverines with a first and ten at the 36-yard line after instant replay, in our opinion, got it absolutely right. Incomplete. Now it'll be a second half. Day. So Gary, after that really strong start by the Wolverines, now the Spartans are digging back in, but that's a big turnover down to the goal line. It is. But if you look at the story of the football game so far, in my opinion, Chad Henney is throwing the ball confidently. Right. And this offense for Michigan, everybody said, "What's wrong? What's wrong?" Well, when your quarterback doesn't play well against Notre Dame and doesn't play well against Wisconsin, you don't win. It's as simple as that. Today he is playing well. We know he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. And, of course, uh, keep in mind what Gary showed you at the top of the game. He's had good first halves. That has not been unusual. And uh, we'll see how he uh, performs in the second half today. Second down and 10. Pocket gives him time. Goes middle. Great grab. Great. Under duress at the 35-yard line. Tyler Ecker, the tight end. So they stay away from Massacoy that time. And uh, let's check in New York. Here's Jeff. Yeah, John, two good early games. Uh, here it's 14-7. And Henny Antonio Bass, another of the young Wolverine wideouts. Here comes Hart trying to stretch that defense. Made the most of it as he stays on his feet while the bandit linebacker Sir Darian Adams runs him out of bounds. You know, Sir Darian Adams, number 27. Take, uh, take a look at him on this play. You bet. First it was Caleb Thornhills at the point of attack. Number 43 plays it nicely, but watch Hart. Uses the straight arm and then gets to the next level for Adams to force Hart out of bounds. Didn't gain much. That's a win for that Michigan State defense. Gary, I love uh, Sir Darian Adams' mother. Said, you know, that's three separate names, folks. Sir Darian Adams, okay? Said, I want my son to have some respect. <laughs> so he put Sir right on the front of him. Second down and nine. 14-7 for Henny and the Wolverines on the move again. Fires sideline, got the first down there. Anthony Avant, the leading receiver in the Big Ten, a one-time basketball star at Carver High School in Chicago, and uh, already scored 
one touch. So Jason Avon comes in out. Watch it. Henny in the smaller box. Avon, look at the cushion. No one near Avon on that play. The ball is thrown again accurately. Chad Henny. Michigan fans are saying, oh, look, if you could have done that against Notre Dame, if you could have done that against Wisconsin, now you're doing it. Well, well. There are no do overs. <laughs> First down and 10. Ball's at the 20 yard line. Hard is hit. Keeps driving and gets back to the line of scrimmage. Man, the first man could not bring him down. That was Sir Darian Adams, the bandit. And uh, he just uh, he had trouble wrestling down. Mike Hart and David Heron has to finish up. Yeah, and, and that's a, a point there, though, that the Michigan coaches are going to take note. Okay, you're moving the ball. You get the ball to the 20-yard line. And what does Michigan State do? Bring the blitz on that play. Michigan's going to say, all right. You know, we'll try to run against you, but anytime we want to, I think we can go out wide and throw that post or post corner if you're Michigan. Second down and 10 is Henning. Off to his strongest start of the year. Using heart. And of course, you know, the quarterback is like the head coach. He's criticized by everybody. And uh, Jack asked Chad, uh, do you pay attention to the criticism on talk radio? from high school I never read a, a piece of newspaper anything in the internet don't listen to the news and uh, that's why you got to keep it I mean be calm ignore what they're saying about you and just go out and play your best big smile on his face right now because things are going his way he had to hear what the Michigan State Steve buddy had to say for him to him though and overrated was the was the nicest of what they chanted prior to this game good defense that time the penetration by David Heron Jr. What an interesting story uh, Heron is. Wow, David Heron who was the blocking fullback for Maurice Claret in high school, made to switch the linebacker, and you see him stuff that play. Now, does Michigan go for this? And again, three straight running plays as you see this ball get stuffed right there into the line of scrimmage. They're going to kick it, I think, Gary. Yeah, I know. And I, don't, aren't you a little curious with that play calling by Michigan right there as easy as they've been able to score with the passing game? Three straight runs, and that gives Michigan State a chance to make a stop. So Rebus, there's Gutierrez. It's fourth and short. Gutierrez, the backup quarterback, 28-yarder. On the hash, they'll take the points. Penalty. Penalty. Penalty flag is down. That'll be a first down. They only needed about a yard. Well, that's that would a make big it first mistake. down and goal. Big mistake. Keeps it alive, so the Wolverines will take the three off the board here, leading 14-7. I think it was Ashton Watson, number 12, that came around the corner and watched him just hit the feet, just the toes, and Rebus falls that over. Oh, that's that cheap. Yeah, there's no doubt. But don't put yourself in that position to let the official make the call. Rebus got one for Michigan there. First penalty of the game. And it'll be first and goal. Never really, really hit his legs, hit his toes. <laughs> look at uh, John Ellis look Parker. At Shouldn't have been there. Michigan State was in a defense safe on that play, and Ashton came a little too aggressively and put himself in position to have a penalty call. Red zone defense here now. They've given up nine touchdowns and 12 trips against them. Not good. One on one to the bottom of the screen again. Thompson with the fullback. Looking at it. Fires incomplete. Avon, the intended receivers, and defended by Watson as we check in again with John. John, I think South Florida is going to make a BCS poll. 14 7. About 12 minutes to go here in the first half. Avon toward the line of scrimmage. Here is Hart. It's stacked up. The Michigan State front blew the play up. Heron and Michael Bazemore, the defensive end. He's only 270 pounds, number 40, but he was in there. Might want to know what happened on the play before with Avon and the quarterback. This is a read route. The quarterback can either get a slant or a fade on the play. Watch this. The quarterback has to read. The receiver has to read. Quarterback thinks he's going inside, throws the slant. Avon goes with the fade. Timeout is called by the Spartan defense. So we'll take a break. 14-7, Michigan Legion. 
Well, our aerial views today from East Lansing. Above this beautiful setting now. It is third down and five for Henny. Let's see if they find Tyler Ecker, their tight end. Go to one of their wideouts. Fires, touchdown, easy. They use the fullback. Michigan has always had the fullback as a receiver. Brian Thompson slipped out that time, and the senior scores the third touchdown of the first half for the Wolverines. Well, they really double team the tight ends right here, and then Brian Thompson slides out to the outside. Look at two guys inside on that tight end, three guys inside. No one goes. That's a missed assignment on the Michigan State defense, and that cost them a four point play by Watson. Should have been three, ended up being six, and probably seven. Revis tacks up the extra point. So remember the penalty on the field goal that gained four points for the Wolverines that time. I'm out. Here's the progressive drive summary, and Michigan now tacks an 87-yarder to an earlier 98-yarder. So they are moving the ball at will against this Spartan defense. And uh, one of the wags up in the press box said, Henny is treating the MSU defense like they're a team for the map. <laughs> of course, that's the only uh, conference that the Wolverines have beaten in the last six games. Demond Williams returns that one just to the other side of the 20th college football on ABU for a college football game. Spartans, their men's and women's basketball teams will be honored here at halftime, both making the Final Fours last year. And uh, they were so hopeful that their football team will continue driving toward a BCS Bowl, but not going to be easy. Javon Ringer, the freshman, is the running back for the Spartans. He's got the dash. He was a big time recruit. 15 yards as Matt Trennan comes back to help out blocking. Well, speaking of good running backs, the last two times these teams played in East Lansing, a running back rushed for 200 yards. Can you name them? One from State and one from Michigan. And folks. we were here for both of them. Yeah, we were. Give another hint. Both players are in the NFL. No more, no more hints. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they might not need a lot of them. <laughs> I think Drew Stanton feels he can move the football, too. Here's the toss play. And Jeremy Scott, who's getting a lot of looks in that backfield. Now, that's something Baldwin didn't tell us that he was going to do in this game, but uh, they're using Scott as Alan Branch comes up to make the pop. That's Kerry Reed, uh, the wide receiver, coming to the uh, near sideline here on the Michigan Michigan State side. On the crowd, quiet again. They were quiet when it was 14-0, then it was 14-7. They got back in it. Now it's 21-7, and they've quieted down again. Uh, Spartan fans have suffered a lot through the years at the hands of their state rival. Uh, the Wolverines have dominated them. Pounding for a first down. Coming with the power back, Kulkrick again. So that's the second time the big fella's really turned 245 pounds loose. And we check in again with John. John, maybe it will be the Mountaineers representing the, uh, the Big East. Snap, fumble snap. Stanton's got it back in his hands. And down he goes. Could have been a turnover. Dave Harris wrapping him up there. But uh, a little volleyball being played in the uh, backfield by the Spartans. Up there. You know, as you see, this snap is a little hard and just a little well, hit him right in the face. Should have had it. That's just a drop ball. You know what I'm impressed with, Brent, is the quickness of Michigan's defense to substitute. They are bringing on spare defensive linemen, linebackers, and defensive backs almost the instant that whistle blows. Now you can see the experience that Michigan has with this spread. They're much more used to playing against it. Jason Teague, the senior, the running back. And they're trying to get the uh, the basketball player going. Matt Trannon hangs on that time. And Pierre Woods, the senior, and a little bit of pushing and shoving. That was a bad right throw side. by Drew Stanton that time. A wide receiver screen. That ball needs to be thrown to the downfield shoulder. What happened was it was thrown to his back, to the deep shoulder, and made Trannon squat and lose all his momentum on the play. It is clear that the Wolverines do not think Trannon is a tough receiver. Watch this ball get thrown back. He stops. He loses all the momentum. He, he fumbles it a little bit, doesn't catch it cleanly, and then is brought down. This is third down and long. Trannon, of course, played for Tom Izzo's basketball team. was a strong rebounder for them. First down, Michigan State. 
And there is Trent and what he does best with that great size of his. He's 6'6". Football is his game, folks, when you think about possible professional career. That's 14 yards from the near sideline. Brent, did you see the corner blitz right there? Trannon just finds his find a weak spot. You see the linebacker out there. The ball is thrown out. Now, I'm telling you, Brent, I think Drew Stanton threw that ball blind to the backside. He looked front, 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 turned and threw it, just assuming that he was wide open. And what a play with a confident quarterback. One of many great athletes out of the Flint area. Roll the pocket to the right. In trouble and throw a strike. Brown fumbles. Ball out of bounds, though, and they wave it off. You can Didn't see the official. The they call it incomplete. Didn't catch it with his hands. Came back to it, but he caught it with his chest, and that's why he missed it. Well, the Big Ten today, and uh, we have Notre Dame at Purdue. So there's your Big Ten schedule. And here, the Michigan Wolverines with three touchdowns in four possessions with the lead. Second down and ten. Fake by Stanton, had plenty of time to strike. Incomplete as the safety beautifully came in. That was Willis Berenger uh, rotating in to make the play. And uh, the safeties, uh, there have been questions about how talented they are. Berenger, he's had an interception in this game, and now he makes another strong play. Terry Love was the intended target that time, number 18, and that was what you call the four vertical, four wide receivers, two outside the numbers, Two right down the hash, and you just throw it at the back of the defender, and, Ber and at that time, Berger came in and made the play on the football. Engelman, of course, the other safety. And that's a penalty. Too many men in the huddle. So that'll cost the, uh, the Spartans. Trailing it by 14 points and uh, making uh, too many mistakes. And the linesman is up there saying that they did it properly. Dead ball. Illegal substitution on the offense. The player came in. We had 12 players when they broke the huddle, even though number 20 was leaving. Five yards, still. Boy, third John down. L. Smith was really a pressure cooker of a game for both John L. and Lloyd Carr. In fact, in some ways, there's more pressure on these two coaches than there is on the players themselves. Uh, John L. has to uh, step up and uh, prove that he can handle Michigan in the favorite role. Here is Stanton, fires, got him. There's Scott to the 12-yard line. Scott gives Stanton and the Spartans a first down. Again, Drew Stanton, and give that offensive line credit on this one. No pass rush from that Michigan play. Third and long, the Michigan defensive line, no pressure at all. Watch Stanton. Looks out to the right, looks to the right, turns back to the left. Then he delivers the ball perfectly to the outside to Scott and wide open on the play to pick up the third down. Mason got turned around a little bit, and that's a 31-yard gain for the Spartans. Coming back with the inside handoff and hoping to punish them with Kulkrick. So Baldwin getting back more often now to his big back. He sits upstairs next to Doug Nussmeyer, the quarterback coach and after every series they talk about what is working and clearly what they hoped would happen with the bigger back is starting to unfold now they're down threatening again they have the ball on the Wolverine six yard line and remember so far in this football game there's only been one designed to run for Drew Stanton in the game that was the touchdown play Stanton a threat always to run down here by the end zone but short of the first down and Kulkrick bobbled the ball. 45 came. Harris came up with the football, but I think the referee says it's down. I think Jim Lepsky walked up, pointed that it was down. And, of course, this is going to cause Jim Augustine next to us to take another look at the replay up here quickly. This is what he will see. Colquitt gets the ball. The ball did hit the ground. His elbow hit the ground, and no that's question. why it popped out. No question. Good call down on the field. No need to even close anybody on this. Third down now. You can see they can get a first down without scoring with the yellow line on your screen. Play fake. Stanton. He's got Woodley. 
He's the one who knocked him out of the game. Woodley's picked up with a block, and here comes Stanton. Cut off again. Did he get the first down? He dove for the first down. It'll depend on the spot. It looked like he had it with that dive. Looked like there was holding early in the play. There was a flag down, and you wonder if Michigan wasn't called or some kind of pick in the secondary, but something very early was called in that play. I believe I saw Kulkrick peel back and throw a terrific block on that play. The flag was thrown in the end zone. Holding number 13. Yeah, it was automatic automatic first down. Defense. I thought it was one of the receivers trying to get out on the play. It could be an automatic. But you're right. As the quarterback, Drew Stanton, reversed his field, all those defensive linemen become very, very Watch. vulnerable to those blocks. I think it was. I think it was Kulkrick, but let's keep an eye. Here's Stand the roll. Out. Lamar Woodley on Woodley the play. Woodley's on him. Now watch Kulkrick, I believe. Boy, I don't know who got him. I, I don't know who got him. If it, in, that, in that play, you could see the blow low to the knee, and that's what happens when the receiver, the running back, or the quarterback reverses his field. Yeah, good point. So it's going to be first down and goal from the one. We'll take a break now. Bigs were shaken up. Left side, number 56, high on your screen. Watch Kulkrick, number 30, come back on the peel back, and he will take care of the linebacker. And on that play, there was a holding penalty. Stefan Wheeler, number 72, has really got it. The holding penalty is right there. Clearly, Grant Mason held it. It would have been a touchdown originally on the play, one-on-one -on -one coverage. The blocks are on like that. Let's see if Baldwin and the coaches reward Kulkrick on first and goal with an offer to try to score a touchdown. It would put him back within seven. Here he comes. Kulkrick, touchdown. He's got it. A very well-deserved touchdown run by 245-pound J.U. Kulkrick. And Pat now the Spartans are an extra point away from making it seven again. Kind of reminds me of a back that might be part of our Aflac answer. Kulkwood right there, the big size guy. Good blocking. You got to give it to that Michigan State offensive line. And how about Drew Stan? There's no backup in that guy. He just keeps firing away. And I, the big one was that third and long pass to Scott that he hit. John Goss to attempt the extra point. Kulkrick with 47 yards rushing here in the first half. Hurt for Michigan has 68. Well, Gary mentioned it. Our Aflac question. The last two times they've played in East Lansing, a running back rush for 200 yards. Can you name them? And I'm sure many of you had it. T.J. Duckett and Chris Perry. Duckett and the Spartans for their last win. This the infamous clock game here. Duckett rushing for 211 yards. Chris Perry. What do you have? 51 carries. 51 carries in that football game. And uh, let's check in with uh, Jack. Well, Brent, J.U. is certainly an unusual name, and it's African for problem child, a nickname his mother gave him in the womb because J.U. kicked so much. But this is a kid that came from really difficult times. He and his sister were from war-torn Liberia after his father was murdered by rebels. His mom had already moved over here to the U.S., went back to rescue J.U. and his sister, Marita, and now they call the United States home, and he calls Michigan State his place where he runs the football. Yeah, indeed, Jack. It's a, it's a very, uh, very nice story, and it's good to see him come through. The coaches were hopeful. John Goss has the ball on the tee here, Gary, to, uh, to kick it off, and uh, we've got uh, 5.53 left in the half. And I don't think this is any surprise for Michigan and Michigan State. They knew this was going to be a high-scoring game. Neither offense can let up. Now here's another kickoff. Hammered in zone, come out the time. And uh, Jack, you've got an old friend with you, Coach, uh, Coach Izzo. Yeah, and if it went a little deeper in the end zone, Tom Izzo, the head coach for the uh, Spartans basketball squad, was going to catch it. Tom, I want to talk a little bit about the importance of playing basketball for Matt Trannon. Because John L. Smith said that was the difference maker in this kid's performance. Well, I love John L. for saying that, but I love Matt Trannon. He was a great basketball player coming out of high school. And, and I think what it helped him with is, you know, catching the basketball. He was fumbling the football a little bit. We tried to help him, and he tried to help us. I want to talk to you about your prospects right after this play. Great. All right, Jack, we'll get done. A lot of folks are thinking the Spartans can make a run on the final four. Kevin Grady is the Wolverine running back out of the I formation. 
Nothing much doing. We go back to Jack and Coach Izzo. I don't know. Now, Brett Musburger's put the pressure on you, Tommy. He says that you guys can go all the way to the Final Four and maybe win it. Thanks, Brent. <laughs> but, uh, you know what? We do have a good basketball team. It's a different team, Brent, than the one you covered last year because we don't have the depth that we had last year, but we have three very, very good players in Edgar Brown and Paul Davis and Drew Neitzel's coming. We need some of those young guys to step up. We're looking forward to it, Coach. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Jack. Terrific guy, like a lot of the basketball coaches around the Big Ten. Mike Hart and coaches around the country. That season will be going soon. Henny with an empty backfield slings it to the freshman wide out that time, or was that Massacoy? Timmy Massacoy, the senior tight end, making his first catch. Yeah, and you're going to have to throw that ball right into the stomach. Massacoy, a leader, worked so hard to get that playing time. And again, it looks like every time that you try to run that ball between the tackles against Michigan State, they feel good about it. When you try to throw that ball against their corners, they get very uncomfortable. Let's see if Michigan doesn't attack those corners. Third and three. Henny. Very unusual to see him drop a ball like that right in the old mitts. Yeah, he, he turned inside and had, again, Penny had the back wide open, Avant wide open, and threw it slightly behind, but Avant eats those up. And you know, Brent, a week ago, he said he lost the game when he made an early drop against Wisconsin. I don't think that was the case, but that's the type of leader he is. Ryan. Kyle Brown awaits the punt. Gonna let this one roll dead, and he's been instructed by the uh, special teams coach at Michigan State, Jim McElwain, to stay far away when a punt starts bound, bouncing like that. Look at this, huh? a little uh, <laughs> get the <to> business. <laughs> you like a quarterback, tough kid. Tough back. 21-14 with 4.19 to go, and Drew Stanton now with a chance to tie this ball game before the intermission. And they go to the freshman. And so that was Ringer, our Pacific Life game summary. Chad Hitty, 12 of 17, 165 yards, three touchdowns. But Drew Stanton and the Spartans dig back in. Culquick with 47 yards and a touchdown. And the defense of the Spartans hoping to close in, but this could be the biggest play of the half. Three points on the board, roughing the kicker, gives Michigan a first down, and they move in for their third touchdown in four possessions. They lead it by seven. The throwback, a play they practiced all day long. They put it in the hands of the speed. Michigan will need the angle to stop him. Touchdown! Kerry Reed, the 6'2 junior, 61 yards. A play they worked on over and over in practice with Stanton looking one way and then turning completely around to throw it. Down twice by 14. Drew Stanton. So many ways to attack in this spread offense. Thought now it's the wide receiver scheme caught Michigan completely flat-footed. John Goss ties it. Deadlocked at 21. You can see it. That's the touchdown player right there to the outside read. Now watch what happens when this ball's thrown compared to the one that went to Tranet. Right to the inside. See how he can go upfield with it? He's pointing the direction he wants to go. He goes for it. And he's got a convoy right down there. That's how you design a wide receiver screen, and he catches it on the run. That's what made the play such a dynamic play. Caught Michigan in a field blitz, and there was no stop at Kerry Reed. Catches it, takes it, and ties the football game. One play, two play, comes back, bows, perfect throw. The base key right there, 
Gordon Nabelski, number 71, gets a clean block, but I don't even know if he had to have that one. That was a touchdown all the way. And Scott stays with it, blocking downfield. There were so many key blocks. Morris, the center, able to get over on that screen, but the action by the quarterback and the Wolverine defense moving hard to the right. This kickoff will be fielded on the three-yard line by Mason. Short of the 30-yard line. So here is your star quarterback comparison in this game. And Henny with three <laughs> touchdowns. Drew Stanton with one. But Stanton's thrown for 209 yards. And Henny for one six. What a duel we're going to have between these two. Absolutely. And we knew it. And you know what's interesting? Both offenses are moving the football. Closing in on 600 yards in the first half of this football game. And I, again, I'm gonna come back that I think Michigan let off the gas pedal a little bit, not throwing the football. The weakness of the Michigan State defense is the secondary. Michigan has to use every opportunity to throw the ball against them. Michigan, of course, is without Steve Bruston, if you joined us late. Back home with his shoulder injury. Fires, got eight yards on that first down to pass. Carl Tab, the 6'2 senior. So we've reached the bottom of the hour. I'm Brett Musburger with Gary Danielson and Jack Aroot. Gorgeous day in East Lansing. Big Ten showdown. Michigan State, unbeaten and ranked. Michigan with two losses already. In fact, if you go back to last year, the Wolverines have lost four of their last six games. There are only two victories over the Mid-American Conference. So it has been uh, a difficult, difficult stretch for Lloyd Carr and the Wolverines. Here is a first down. Mike Hart returning to the lineup uh, in this game, and he has run very, very well. At the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make George Perlis and Bo Schembeck are wondering, whatever happened to my Michigan-Michigan State game? <laughs> this thing has turned into something they've never seen around here. Both teams spread offenses, throwing it all over the field. This is a different type of Big Ten football than it was even five years ago. Henny steps up in the pocket and fires complete to the near side. So easy. He's short of the 40-yard uh, line, and there's Avant, number eight, who scored a touchdown, dropped his last pass that was thrown to him, but not that time. Working on the sideline with 2.18, clock stopped as he's out of bounds, and uh, the Wolverines trying to regain the lead. They struck first on their opening possession of the game. Sort of interesting, Michigan State won the toss, and they did not defer. Uh, we don't see that very often. They took the football. And uh, so the Wolverines will have it when we start the second half. First down and 10. They bunch the Wolverine receivers to the left. Kenny, though, looks back underneath and short to Mike Hart, the running back. Ashton Brooks in the corner. With the football game. That's three straight times in this drive. Michigan has started off first down on a pass. They feel comfortable throwing the ball. They should. It's there. Second down and four. The offensive line, that's a first down. They'll spot that ball for a first down as he comes back to the tight end, Massacoy, number 88. And they'll give him the spot. But uh, we must uh, give credit, Gary, to that offensive line of, uh, of Lloyd Carr. Stenovich, Hennigay, Kraus, Lentz. Wiley doing a good job here. First down and 10. You could see very comfortable in the pocket. Avon on that quick pitch. And on those soft corners, they're just attacking underneath relentlessly. Well, that, that's what they're going to force. They're going to, and, and it, it's what I would do if I was calling plays against Michigan State. They're going to force Michigan State to move up and take away the quick pass again. You really can't rush Chad Henney if he's going to take three-step drops and just throw it out to the outside. Then the quarterbacks move up, the corners move up, and the deep game will be there. This is pretty simple if you're Michigan. The required mouthpiece back in place for the Michigan quarterback. Come back. You cannot give up the run, but that time, number 41, David Heron Jr., their junior linebacker, making still another stop. He has been... Uh, a very solid linebacker and a timeout is going to be called by the Wolverines with 117 to go and we check in with the Jack on the field. Well, Brent, let's go back to that little chippiness by the quarterback for the Wolverines just a few plays ago when he decided he was going to lock horns. One of the reasons why Chad Henney doesn't put up with anything is the fact that he started his career as a linebacker and a running back. 
not as a quarterback. In fact, it wasn't until the eighth grade. The way he became quarterback was the high school football coach went to the eighth graders because the high school didn't have a quarterback, said, who can throw the ball? And he was mum. And one of his teammates turned him in, said he can throw it a mile. Next thing you know, Chad Henney was hauling the ball, and he's been so ever since. And uh, he's, he's a good one. There's his numbers on the day. Both quarterbacks now have thrown for the exact same amount. 209 yards of pass offense in this game for both quarterbacks in the first half. And Chad Henney was so big, so young, Brent, that I know of one Big Ten coach that offered him a scholarship after his sophomore year in high school. Well, you can see him checking the wristband there. Plays are all numbered as he brings the offense out with 121 to go before the intermission. The Wolverines have one timeout remaining according to the scoreboard and the Spartans with two. We are tied at 21. It is third down and seven. A four-man rush. Fire short of the first down. This will be fourth and short, and the uh, Spartans are indicated it's waved off, but the umpire is right there. Avant, the intended receiver, and Heron again, the defender. Lloyd checking that clock at 106, wants to see where it's uh, spotted, whether he's going to go for the field goal. Now, if you're going to take the field goal, I'd let the clock run down. If you're going to go for it, I'd call a timeout. So you don't want to this kick will be a their field last goal. time out if, if I'm right about that I checked George Hill and uh, that's confirmed so here you see it 52 seconds left in the half and we'll take a break so the Wolverines started out red hot in this game 98 yards for a touchdown and they have also had 52 and 87 yards for a touchdown so they have gone the long way Gary. yeah twice 10 play drive and 11 play drive that really keeps Drew Stanton off the football field, one of the goals in this game, but it's still 21-21. And uh, really, really close at 600 yards now of offense. Again, you wondered, are they going to go for it? Because you did use the timeout on fourth down. Well, instead of taking the timeout, what Michigan should have done is ask for a measurement, which you can in that situation, a regroup. Now they need the first down on fourth and one. And Hart's got it. And the clock will stop, and he's still going. So it took two big old Spartans to finally wrestle number 20 to the turf here in East Lansing. That was a great, that was the good strategy. Lloyd used it exactly the way I thought. If you're going to take the timeout, you have to go for it. Now the clock stops. You have an opportunity to put seven points up. Remember now they're without a timeout. They bring the clock down. And, of course, if the Spartans don't toughen up against Mike Hart, they're going to give up seven instead of three. And there again is uh, David Heron. Now they'll go up and ground the ball. Looks like they'll just go up and do a clock play here, giving them one more shot at the end zone. 19 seconds to go. Now, last week, a little bit of controversy, and Lloyd was criticized with nine seconds to go. Michigan had an opportunity to go for the end zone on third down. They had an illegal procedure penalty. Three seconds went off the clock. They sent the field goal team out, and then they put the time back on. They kicked the field goal, ended up being a big play. This time, they're going to go for it. All I know is you don't want to miss a second half at this point. Antonio Bass, number 18, one of the wideouts. Can't get sacked here if you're Chad Henney. Had time, fires, out of bounds. Stopping the clock Good with 13 seconds State. to go. Carl Tab, number 17, the uh, the receiver. Now remember, they're without timeouts, so they've got to work against the fact that they've got only 13 seconds to go here in this situation. Well, they gotta they've the got to kick the now. field goal. Yeah. Fourth down, you got to get points. That was a very important hit on that far side to get Tab out of bounds and uh, force them into a field goal situation here. Well, it would have been nice for Michigan State to tackle them inbounds on the play, but good defense to force the throw short of the first down. And here's Revis. 20 yards. <laughs> Got it. So it is 24-21. The Wolverines, once they let it by as many as 14, and we'll be back after this message and word from our ABC station. Final nine seconds here, 24-21, Michigan leading. 
Um, masterful use of the clock that time by the Michigan offense. They got it down there. They made sure they got their three points. The only problem it could have been is they would have got tackled inbounds. I thought that ball would have been thrown into the end zone. But Chad Henning now must show that he can finish this football game. Ironically, both teams, the word is finish. Michigan State from a year ago had that finish in their whole offseason program. And now Chad Henning needs to finish this football game as hot as he's been. Devon Williams back to return. Into this breeze. They'll kick it on the ground to try and eat up these seconds. All the way to DeMond. Dances out. And he is down at about the 34-yard line with three ticks of the clock left. So one snap here for the, uh, for the Spartans. In the corner will return that coming over to the near sideline. 24-21, sellout crowd here. The crowd seems to be just taking a deep breath. Yeah, just absolutely. kind of <laughs> relaxing, going to get them a little brout. Uh, going to get ready for the uh, second half here. And it, it figures again to be uh, a dandy, just like last year down in Ann Arbor. Now, John L's a little different. He never lets up off the gas pedal. Do they throw one more deep pass here, or do they take a knee? Jason Teague is the running back, and uh, now Stanton going to use one of the They lined uh, up in a bunch. Timeouts. They lined up in a bunch shotgun on that play. Well, you know, uh, John L. John L. Smith uh, talked about uh, talked to Gary about just how big this game is for his team. I know this, Gary, this could be a giant step for our kids and for our program and for we want to take where we want to take this program. And so we need to take that step forward to get to the upper echelon of the Big Ten where we need to be. Down by three right now. Last snap of the half coming up here for Drew Stanton and uh, the Spartans. And look at this Michigan lineup. Michigan State, excuse me, lined up in the shotgun formation. Three receivers to the bottom of the screen. They're going to let it fly. Are they going to let it fly one more time? And uh, Michigan drops everybody back. Stanton arches it deep. And it is intercepted by Berenger. And he fumbles, but recovered by the Wolverines. And that will bring the first half to an end. 45 points scored here by the Spartans and the Wolverines. A little chuckle as they go off. Michigan leads it by three. It took three overtimes to settle it last year. Here at the intermission, three points. Michigan leads 24-21. Chad Henney has had a hot hand in the first half. 19-24, 219 yards, and three touchdowns as the Wolverines strike first. Now, Gary, we got something that's really out of whack. <laughs> well, coming into this football game, Michigan State's defense, and I admit the competition wasn't there, was controlling the game. Only two drives of plus 80 yards, and the Michigan offense has kept Drew Stanton off the field. That was part of their game plan. They drove it twice for touchdowns. That was a big part of this football game. Your feeling is, though, that the Spartans are very vulnerable on the corners, and I haven't heard you say anything about the vulnerability of the Wolverine defense. They seem kind of sound. I, I think they do. I, I think Michigan State has got their big plays on part of the offense and, and the, the brilliant passing of Stanton. It's been easy pickings for Chad Henney in this football game. It's real tempting to call a pass on every play because Michigan State secondary does not match up. Remember, we go back to the start of the game. The Spartans won the toss and took the ball. And it goes through Mason's hands out of the end zone. And it'll come out on the 20 yard line. So the Wolverines will have the first possession here in the second half. And we check in with Jack. In that mismatch, the, the secondary, the corners for Michigan State Spartans is what concerns John L. Smith. On the way out, he said, look, this is the problem. He said it's not that they're being outplayed. He says they're being outthought. He criticized them at the halftime by making major mental errors, Gary. He looked a little shell-shocked. But then again, so did Lloyd Carr when I talked to him as well. This has been a battle. Sure has. Demond Williams. The J.C. transfer and Ashton Watson will open on the corners. Jaron Hayes tried it once and got turned completely around by the freshman Mario Manningham. So here is first and ten. Four down. The backers are off a few yards. Henny 
is sacked. So his receiver was covered. He thought better of it. And Domata Pecco, he with the uh, great hairdo. From, and let, uh, Samoa, 320 pounds. And let's go back to that story we started out with this football game. Chad Henney has had a brilliant first half of this season, but in the second half, he struggled. First pass of the game in the second half, he takes a stack. He must be better than 40% to beat this Michigan State offense, not the defense. Hart will return to action, and this will put the Wolverines in the third and long. Our Pacific Life game summary stats. And look at the offense that we have in this game, folks. I mean, that's wow. Talk about yardage, average yards. Seven, four, eight, one. Seven, four, eight, one. This is becoming, with the two offenses, somewhat like a tennis match. You must hold serve because if the other guy gets the ball, you anticipate he's going to put points on the board. Four down lineman, nickel look against the wideouts. Henny up in the pocket, intercepted, picked off. And a penalty flag thrown as the ball was intercepted by Sir Darian Adams, the bandit. Looked like an illegal formation or illegal procedure by Michigan on the play also. So Michigan starts out not holding serve, but worse, double faulting. Illegal shift on the offense. The penalties decline. First down. Right in the middle of the field, this is going to happen. They're going to get a crossing route right through the middle of the field. And that's where the interception happens. Play action pass, linebacker drops right there, the crossing route is coming, and Sidarian Adams drops right into the spot. Chad Henney tried to force one in, and the story develops the first time this season Michigan State has started inside the 20 yard line. Jason Teague is the running back for Drew Stanton. Gets the handoff, Teague on a cutback. And on the interception we go back to the bandit and Adams is from Bradenton Florida and it's a hybrid position it really is a safety that they move up and he can play both ways he can defend the run or the pass and for a time the Spartans were going to put their outstanding safety Eric Smith at the bandit position but Adams came along so quickly that they were able to use 27 and here he comes up with a huge turnover second down Cut back by Teague and keeps battling toward the first down marker, but there is a penalty flag. Yeah, holding on Lamar Woodley. That was a pretty easy one. Lamar Woodley was not able to be blocked and held on the play. All that bouncing around. Ten yards penalty. Repeat, repeat. Second down. Mike Getvey, number that time, number 66, is the guy that had it. And uh, sometimes it's hard to block a great guy. And when the back moves around and jitterbugs around, goes inside, goes outside, you see it grab at the jersey. That was an easy one and a very undisciplined penalty by Michigan State. Ringer, the freshman, is the running back on second and 16. He motions out. Stanton takes off. And he is colored. So this will uh, the 17 yard line and Chris Graham, the inside linebacker for the Wolverines, bring it down, number five. Now you start to think if Michigan State might give Michigan a little taste of their medicine here and go to Trannon on the mismatch of the fade. Trannon's in the football game, but they just lob one up for him to go up and get it like a rebound. Morgan Trent is in at the left corner. Trannon, the basketball player, down though at the bottom of your screen against Mason. They look in that direction, come back, fire the screen, and went for a touchdown, and close to a first down inside the 10-yard line. So John L. and the staff must make the decision this time. Behringer makes the, uh, the stop on Ringer. Did it very quickly, did not even hesitate sending this field goal team out there at least to line up in a field goal situation. That's a great stop by the Michigan defense. The penalty was the key play. John Goss 
McElwain, the special teams coach. This a 26-yard attempt. The punter, Brandon Fields, on to hold it. Chris Morris is the snapper for the tie. Knocks it down. Deadlocked at 24, East Lansing. The battle continues between the Spartans and the Wolverines. Welcome back to the land of Sparty. And his Spartans have tied it up here at 24 with a field goal. A tremendous quarterback duel between Henny and Stanton. Henny with three first half touchdowns and a second half interception as Gary continues our storyline of Henny having excellent first halves and struggling in the second. This will come out on the 20 yard line and again a reminder over on ESP. Against Wisconsin last week, Michigan's offense put 268 yards up in the first half. Only 133 in the second half. Just five first downs. Using the fullback with Hart. And they run Mike right straight ahead. And he is a tough, you know, he's tough to find, leave alone bring down. Even when you watch on the monitor, as he squirts in behind his big offensive lineman, he'll come out the other end on you. And, uh, the Michigan Wolverines, here's the drive chart, Gary. Yeah, I didn't, you can see it. The big drive to start off the game after that punt down to the two-yard line really set the tone, made this game a real wide-open football game. Second down and long. And this is going to leave them with about four yards that they're going to need with Caleb Thornhill from the uh, very well-known Thornhill family. What was his dad nickname? Mad Dog? Something like that. He was his papa was a he was a hard hitter. And this is the uh, the third of the two boys followed pops. So the Thornhills have been prominent for the uh, Spartans. Michigan rights to run those little squeeze plays. Receivers squeeze off of each other. One of them stops and turns around right by the 30-yard line. Leading three. And he flips it out to his freshman. He cannot get it. So Mario Manningham, who scored a touchdown in the first half, is stopped by Otis Wiley, another freshman, and the nickelback. Number 21 makes a big defensive play. He's a corner of the future here in East Lansing. Manningheim showed his inexperience on this play. This is third and short. Take it right up the field, right up the field. He gives ground to the outside, and that's why he didn't pick up the first down. That should have been like a running play up there and dive across the line. Ross Ryan back to punt. The Wolverines. They had three protectors back that time, and uh, Kyle Brown apparently did not signal for the fair catch. He's simply muscled. Now, does Drew Stanton's offense reflect his person? I've been raised to be a leader in everything that I do and kind of being aggressive, and that's what this offense is about. It's about taking your chances and knowing when to take your chances, but taking what they're giving you. He was down 14-0 in the first quarter, 21-7 early in the second quarter. And now he has driven the Spartans into a 24-all tie on first 10. Moving pocket left, got a receiver, and accurately hits him again. Out of bounds, putting the ball in Terry Love's hands. Haul the defensive back. Can it be any prettier than that? You half roll out, you pull your quarterback up. Michigan has no chance, really, to put any pressure on the quarterback and on the uh, Stanton on that type of play. And he puts the ball accurately. You know, you talk to the coaches here, they say he kind of throws an ugly ball. Boy, it isn't ugly to me. He puts it on the face mask, you know, seven, eight out of ten times. First down and ten. Come back with Cole Crick, the big back. In the uh, first half, he rushed for 47 yards. Gabe Watson down to that defense. First down and ten. Come back with Cole Crick, the big back. In the uh, first half, he rushed for 47 yards. Gabe Watson down to that defensive line makes the stop. You know, you go back to a year ago, and you see number 56, Woodley, and your mind flashes to the end of Stanton's afternoon in Ann Arbor. And uh, I had a chance to ask Drew if he thought Woodley gave him the business, drove him into the turf, and he said, no, no, no. There was nothing dirty about that play. My shoulder hit awkwardly, and uh, he underwent surgery up there, and 
Today he has stayed away from number 56. Slips inside, backside fumble. Got hit from the backside, and the Wolverines were on it. They've got it on the turnover. So that time, Mr. Harris was in there, and he should have just swallowed the football because there was tremendous backside pressure on him that time. Ran the sprint out that time right into the teeth of the blitz. Had too many guys on the half roll watch. He rolls into it, Michigan and, and, and comes with the blitz to that side. Burgess from behind him, number six, gets a piece of it, and then the ball's popped loose. Lands on the floor, and Harris gets the recovery. I think it was Pierre Woods that knocked it out that time. It was Pierre Woods. It came from the backside. First down and 10. There's that quick throw against the soft corner, Avant. See, that, that's what I like. That's what I like Michigan to do now. Set up the second half the way they set up the start of the football game. Serve notice to Michigan State again. We don't believe your corners can cover us. We're going to take the easy throw if you give it to us. You must adjust to us. It's like checkers. The ball is at the Spartans 41 yard line. Demond Williams is number nine. He's only 5'9. Ashton Watson, 5'11. Going deep, gave on. Incomplete. So Chad Henney went for the score on that pass with 8.07 to go. And our now for Michigan, third and medium. Last two times on third down. Out of the game. Let's see what they do here. Three receivers to the right, and they're going to throw. To the running back, Hardy won't get it. He was dogged from behind by Brandon McKinney, the 320-pound senior, and the coaches will show him that tape and say, look, that's why we wanted you to shed 15 pounds. You're much quicker. <laughs> and, you know, he read it so well. You can, he, Whether he lost the weight or not, he recognized the screen pass. He saw Hart move inside. When you see a back move inside, you always become questioned whether he's going to run the screen. Folks, that's the third three and out for the Wolverines this half as the Spartan defensive staff makes the correct adjustments. Punt is hung high for Brown. He's going to let this one go. It's going to be down, tapped, down inside the five-yard line. Tremendous coverage by the Wolverines that time. And that play was by Brandon Harrison, number 27. Didn't panic, put his foot right there, and then just tipped it back in. Let's go quickly to John in New York. Inside the five, Ringer, the freshman, is the deep set running back. Picks his way out to the five. Prescott Burgess and Brandon Engelman, number 31, very prominent defensively there. We come down to the bottom of the hour, 2.30 Eastern here in uh, East Lansing, Michigan. Gary and Jack, I'm Brent here. Nice to have you with us, this Big Ten Donnybrook. Between unbeaten Michigan State and twice beaten Michigan and the underdog. Very unusual, isn't it? I think you have to go back to the 70s, somebody said. Second down and eight, here comes the blitz. They run against it. Freshman looked like he had the corner, but quickly Burgess and friends closed in on the near side. Jimmy Herman's Berenger, the uh, the safety. Gary. Jimmy Herman's guessing right a little bit here now, Brent. You know, with his calls again, that was the next second blitz in a row, right into the teeth of the call for Michigan State. As a defensive corner, that's what you want to do. That's why you do all that film study. You're calling those plays not by chance. You're doing it educated guesses, and right now he's guessing right. Most of those yards came in the first half. We had the offenses have bogged down here a little bit. Michigan State was able to move down and tie it with a field goal. This is third and five. Stanton stands tall, fires, goes down. Out to the 27-yard line, Terry Love again. He is impressive. 
Just a sophomore. Watch him come across the middle of the field here. Just a square in route and snap that ball out of midair right as Engelman is on him on the play. Watch him snap it. Goes up. Catches the ball with his thumbs together. Snaps it down. That way you don't bobble it. Look at that. That is how you teach it. Square in route. If you're a quarterback, you got to throw it to the linebackers' heads. Receivers go up and catch it. Two hands. Draw play. And Teague crosses the 35-yard line. Engelman, the safety, makes the hit. Well, let's meet uh, our quarterback, Drew Stanton. The sport that I'm best at besides football uh, has to be baseball. The uh, best place to go on a date in East Lansing is probably uh, my favorite place would have to be the fish market. When I was a kid playing football, I always pretended I was Barry Sanders. How do you like a quarterback who didn't look up to another quarterback who was That's a running a, back? He was he's the best guy operator. on the team, by the way. <laughs> that quick throw on that screen. They put it in Trannon's hands, and the football player is close to the midfield. <laughs> This all has to fit together if you're running these wide receiver screens. The ball has to be thrown upfield towards the way the receiver and the other receivers have to block. Jeremy Scott does a good job right there getting a block on the play. You see downfield, Kyle Brown gets a play. Positive play. If you do it right, it will work. Scott, he's taking a direct snap through an interception in the first half down at the uh, one-yard line. Comes out as one of the four wideouts as the Spartans spread the field again. And the running play is blown up. The freshman was hit as he got the handoff by Jamison. And Jamison just ate him up. Number 90 was right there, and we check in with Jack. Brett, maybe one of the reasons why Drew Stanton says his second best sport is baseball is because he was so accomplished at baseball in high school. As a pitcher in high school, he hit 561 his junior year at Harrison High in Farmington Hills. And uh, as a shortstop, he had a, and as a pitcher, he had a 94-mile-an-hour fastball. There was a point in time, Brent, when he thought he had a better future in Major League Baseball than in the NFL. Yeah, but Gary asked me the other day, Jack, if uh, he would take the money from George Steinbrenner and run, and he said, no way, this is too much fun. He sets the screen again. Looks at Ringer's hands, and he crosses midfield. Good-looking freshman running back is uh, Berenger. Makes the stop. He's got a little bit of dash. You get number 39 to the open field. Berenger shaking up on the hit. Catches the ball very comfortably, but Berenger did a nice job. That play had some potential to pick up big plays, but Berenger came in very low. That's what you got to do. You get those big offensive linemen in front of you as a defensive back. That's when you really want to submarine the play. Berenger made a nice stop there. This Michigan Here. State offense has so many different styles of a way to attack you. Derringer's on the sideline, third and six. Stanton's going to run for it. Dive for the first down. No sliding for number five. <laughs> number five. He is something to watch. Did you College football is brought running quarterback. Not so much the design runs, but the runs off of the pass. And Stanton heard him there for a first down. Uh, counter step by the freshman Javon Ringer, and he's tripped up by Dave Harris. And uh, John, what's up with the Hokies of Virginia Tech? That's it. I'm back on the South Florida bandwagon in the Big East. 24 all with 157 to go in the third. A strike for eight yards. And Grant Mason Michigan the stop on Kyle Brown. Michigan went with a three-man line that time. Dropped eight. I'll tell you, sometimes if you got a hot quarterback the way Stanton is, you can drop 12, and you'll still find a seam to throw the ball in. That was pretty well covered, but Stanton just ripped that throw in there. He is extremely confident. Time permitting, of course, stay tuned for the thrifty... There's the option look, and the freshman with the first down run. Beautiful look from Drew Stanton, and they have to be so conscious of his running ability as he waited before he put it in Ringer's hands. And that brings it to Drew Stanton and what he has to do. One thing he has to do if he's Michigan State, survive the Big Ten. You got a lot of guys taking shots at him and a lot more on the horizon. They're going to try to nick this guy. If he doesn't get hurt, 
he may just be the Big Ten's most valuable football player. Engelman is still out at that safety position, and Harrison, a freshman, playing for the Wolverines, and another freshman as Berenger checks back in just prior to that play for the Spartans. Stack the three receivers, that familiar look. And they put it in Trannon's hands behind the two blockers. And Trannon is punched out of bounds at the 12-yard line as the rangy basketball player brings it down between his two blocking wideouts. Well, they only have 20 hours to prepare. Each team does in college football. Michigan State seems to be able to squeeze a lot into 20 hours on offense. And really what it is is experience in the offense year after year after year it's a cumulative effect and you can see they have many more plays they draw from than they did even last year first down from the 12 yard line t cuts back across the five yard line as the final seconds tick away here in the third quarter drew stanton with the four fingers in the air the money quarter is coming up next Last year, it took three overtimes to decide this battle. Will we have more of the same? Well, we're about to find out. Well, the tale of two halves as far as the offenses and defenses are concerned, Gary. Yeah, it sure has been. Of course, we had the interception in there. That'll cut chances. And Michigan State with that yardage. This is a methodical drive that's going on, you know, seven and a half minutes right here. Second and seven for Stanton. And the Spartans, as we start the final quarter, Stanton keeps it, and he stopped at the six-yard line. It'll be third down. Interesting game in that uh, Michigan started out so well, and we just go back to what we said about Chad Henney's struggles in the second half. Uh, I got it down right here. I had to look at it myself twice. Three for five for seven yards in the second half. That's what happens. You only have nine plays in the second half so far by your offense. You can't win. And it, it's tough. It goes back to the quarterback. Believe me, I've been there. I know what it's like. There's a long handoff to the freshman who won't get there either. And Curious this will call. set up a field goal situation for John Goss. And uh, you would have expected them yeah. maybe to put a little more pressure on with a run pass option with stand to the wide side, but uh, hindsight's 2020 as usual. Curious call here, a stretch play against Michigan's defense. They looked at first to be a little bit confused, but you see it coming up from the outside. They get tackles from the secondary that time, and that's really what cleaned up the play. Grant Mason made the play. I thought they would come with the option. I would have guessed option play forever. I'd have bet my money on it. 23-yarder for the lead with John Goss doing the kicking. Left hash. Tough angle up short, and you can see he pulled it. He misses it. That is a tough angle, and I am surprised on fourth down that they didn't come in the other direction to improve the angle, even if they didn't get the touchdown. So it's still deadlocked at 24 here in the fourth quarter. In Lansing, the Michigan State Capitol, which was built in 1879 and modeled after our Capitol building in Washington, D.C. If you look down from the blimp here, 24 all the battle of Michigan continues Chad Henney and the Wolverines coming out Here's Hart behind the fullback to daylight and Mike breaks free 50 in a foot race with Smith out of bounds at the 16 yard line Eric Smith the strong safety finally runs him down but that is 66 more yards and what a difference heart makes with this offense they released the tight end right here and that causes the defensive end to kind of get out of sync look at that hole the good block inside by brian thompson and i'll tell you eric smith pretty impressive on this play mike hart is not a burner and eric smith ran him down to save for what right now a touchdown at least Officially 64 yards, 158 on the day for Hart. Grady replaces him. He gets the carry and twists free from the first hit and battles his way 
to the 12 yard line. So the freshman with a powerful run. Nick Smith making that stop. We're going to go back to that Michigan State drive because it could have been very, very important. They held the ball for 16 plays for 90 yards and they came away with zero as in goose egg points and right now Michigan has taken it right back down their throat and remember on the interception starting on the 18 yard line they got three points so two opportunities total three points Hart back on the field for the Wolverines daylight and Mike battles for the first down again. You just cannot bring that little rascal down. How could anybody have thought that he was going to be too small to play college football after breaking all of those rushing records in the state of New York? He is awesome. Well, he's one of those guys, it, it, kind of like Drew Stanton, the measurements, the measurables just don't count. You know, he doesn't run the fastest 40, not the tallest guy in the world. But boy, he knows how to run and he knows how to deliver a blow when he is running. He makes the defender feel the hit instead of the other way around. Will Paul is his lead blocker if they elect to come back with it. And they do. Following Paul, moving the legs. And it took three of the green jersey fellows to bring him down right now. Eric Smith and Baysmore were two of them. And Pecco was the third one. He was also in on it. So well, this is second to go, Gary. This is when Terry Malone loves to run that play action pass to those tight ends and fullbacks in the flat. Offensive coordinator at Michigan Fullback. just loves this second down call. They're running the ball well. Be interested to see what he dials here. Well, Thompson caught a touchdown pass earlier from the fullback position. He's back on the field. They're looking in that direction, and he might have to throw the corner. Penalty flag is down. No catch. You could see the call that time. Ecker, but there is a penalty flag. I think Eric Smith, number 36, got hit him early, but I don't know if he caught the ball or not. Ecker thinks he did. <laughs> and of course, replay will look at the uh, situation upstairs also because they enter into this catch or no catch in the end zone, depending yep. on this call. Second down play action. The ruling on the field is there is not a catch. Pass interference, number 42 of the defense. First and goal. The previous spot is the two-yard line by rule, half the distance, and an automatic first down. Now take a look and see if you think catcher. No There's catch. Eric Ecker wide open on the play. I think it's Eric Smith. No, it isn't. It comes inside that stick. time. And does he catches it one? Has his feet on the ground. Looks like he may be bobbling it just a bit. Yeah, so Tabachnik was the defender, and in this situation, nothing's indisputable about this, let me tell you. It looked like the right ankle, but only maybe. They still have a first end goal. Good strike position for the Wolverines. Slipping, and Hart is down, and touchdown is signal. The side judge throws it up and says he broke the plane with the ball. He was stumbling. And somehow he managed to slip the ball across the plane. How huge the is that? The goal line is a plane, the sidelines a boundary. It's as simple as that. Michigan State dominating the third quarter, get just three points. All of a sudden you pop a run for 64 yards and you score seven to take the lead. 165 yards and a touchdown for Mike Hart. Levis tacks on the extra point. Now it is Stanton and Michigan State's turn. And the last time, they drove it down there and came up empty. And the Spartans again are under the gun as you watch. Paul, the lead blocker. Now here's where he starts to stumble. Now watch somehow. Keeps the left knee off the ground before he breaks the plan. Wonderful balance by Mike Hart. Take another look at this. He's starting to go down on the cut. Somehow the knee doesn't touch the ground. That's just a sensational effort. And remember, that play was designed to go right over the guard, right behind Paul. He saw it and made it to the stretch to the outside. Oh, yeah, Jack Hart makes a huge difference with the Wolverines. Yeah, and you'd be surprised. A kid from Syracuse, New York, wanting to always dream about being a Michigan Wolverine. But his mom discovered that fact after Mike Hart declared for Michigan. His mom Rory discovered a poem 
in which he dreamed some specific dreams and wrote, Mike Hart did, when he was seven years old. These are the two dreams that he had, Brent. The first, playing for the University of Michigan. The second, break Barry Sanders' rushing record. And uh, Lloyd Carr will take the first one. Doesn't care a whole lot about the second one. <laughs> As college football on ABC is brought to you by Cat Front. You know, five out of the 11 football teams in the Big Ten are running the spread offense this year. Last year, this conference threw over 4,500 passes through the whole year. I think they may beat that this year. Cole Crick is the running back. Stanton rolls hard to the right, and he'll keep this one. And he'll step out of bounds at the uh, 17. Did not even get back to the line of scrimmage. Just Pierre Woods made a couple of plays for him defensively. It was right down there on uh, number five. And uh, the Spartans have been... Uh, bottled up here for the most part of the second half yeah Le leon hall did a nice job that time taking away the primary throw no one really to go to that time for drew stanton and uh i'll tell you i got a feeling that dave baldwin offensive coordinator for michigan state is going to second guess himself all week for that third down call down there on the goal line second down and 12 ran to the left side gave the field goal kicker in the process a tough angle yep. ringer the running back Trannon comes in motion and they set ringer he got nowhere to go and he takes a whipping at the 12 yard line big mr watson unloaded on it yeah but dave dave harris the middle linebacker number 45 has been all over this football field he's waited till a senior to play but 45 it's a fake screen to the left side of the screen and then he comes back to the right side of the screen and watch 45 Come right there, there he is, right there, coming into the play, sets it up, and then cleaned up by Massey. Oh, oh and then Watson. Like I said, head Mr. Head. Watson met up with him. <laughs> yes, indeed. And uh, we've got uh, Lamar Woodley down. He'll have to leave for at least a play. Lamar Woodley shaken up. We'll go to the Wolverine sideline. That type of play, you'll get an offensive tackle kind of throwing at the legs of the defensive end. Thirty-one twenty-four. Five receivers and no running backs is the look. Stanton with time going deep middle. Scott dropped it at the 46-yard line. He had it the old breadbasket, and he'd have been off to the races. Sure would have been. Grant Mason was on coverage that time. Number 13 waved at the ball, but didn't hit it. And Scott dropped it. That could have been huge. Mason was there, but just missed the play. Corner route to the outside. You see Mason one-on-one -on -one all the way. Looks back. The ball's still. Watch Mason weave at it. Miss it. And it's dropped. Brandon Fields in the punt again. Low line drive. Leon Hall has replaced the injured Preston today as the punt returner. Holds on to the ball and goes down at the 46-yard line. The Wolverines with a seven-point lead, and they have possession back. Now well, you look down at these uh, beautiful aerial shots, courtesy of our friends at uh, Man, when we were over champs last night watching that baseball game. Did we have a blooming onion? Uh, they don't no, have we didn't grab one of those. No, we didn't. We had a cross a promotion there. <laughs> uh, I think this is the most important series for the Michigan State defense all football game. Early Michigan's defense answered the call after the turnover. Right now, Michigan State must stop this drive. Paul is still the fullback. And Hart, who has been the workhorse here today, is just short of the... 50-yard line, and Pecco making the stop, making uh, that one. Oh, I, I was going, are they playing Arizona State or the Arizona Cardinals that this is such a big game for? <laughs> Second down. <laughs> Just short of the, uh, of the first down, Carl Tab, number 17, who was the... Motion receiver that time. That's that rub off play that Michigan runs so many times in a football game. Put the receiver in a little motion, cross a couple people, have them turn around eight, nine yards, throw a strike right at him. Now you would expect Mike Hart to saddle up on this play. 
behind the fullback, and they would look for the first down. Here's your play. Got it behind the right side of that Michigan offensive line. They came in behind Ruben Riley and Matt Lintz over there for the first down. Chains will move. And Mike Martin today, folks, 23 carries, 171 yards, and a touchdown coming off the injured list. What a great dive for that touchdown. Still don't understand how he kept his knees off the ground as he was going down. And remember on the pass to Manningheim, they faked it to Hart for the play action pass. Better than 800 yards in this game. And he sets the screen through it in the ground because Hart was covered. That was a good decision by Chad Henney that time because Hart had one-on-one -on -one coverage and was going nowhere. Clifton Ryan, number 92, smelled that out. You could see when you play Michigan, you must be ready for the receiver screen and running back screen. And this time, as Henney throws it away, Michigan State was all over that play. The John L lost an assistant coach here at Michigan State to Michigan. And they were concerned about the information that he took over there with them. And the Wolverines have done a good job against the Spartans in this game. So they debriefed him very well. Pass is complete to the 36-yard line. You see on the far side, there are three dummy signal callers from Michigan as we come to the top of the hour. And uh, with Gary Danielson and Jack Ruth, there they are right there. Now, only one of them is hot. And Gutierrez, one in the middle of that combination. So you are led to believe that that assistant coach said, you better have a couple of dummy signal callers when you go up to East Lansing. Not thinking of conspiracy, folks, but uh, I am struck by that on the other side. Short drop, Henny, Avon's hands. Avon crashes to the 25, first and 10, Michigan. It seems so easy. Run Hart, throw the quick passes, keep Michigan State completely off balance with the quick game. Don't allow the blitz package to get to you. Get it out in the hands of your receivers. You don't need seven-step drops. You don't have to drop back and put Henny in any peril. Just get it in and out of his hands quickly. And there is Ahmad out of Chicago. Averaged 16 points a game. That was Carver High School. Another great Michigan player came out of there by the name of Kazi Russell. Basketball player that uh, I'm sure Wolverine fans well remember. Coming up to uh, Ann Arbor and then going on to start him in the uh, National Basketball Association. This drive could be lethal in this game. Look at the clock winding down. We're halfway down through that fourth quarter right now. Michigan is up by seven. They stopped Michigan State on that long drive. Lloyd Carr and his staff are patiently eating up the seconds, bringing it back down right now, trying to take as much time off the clock as they can with a seven-point lead. Kevin Grady and timeout Henny. Henny will call timeout. Just remember, a year ago, in the last eight minutes of the game, there were a lot of points scored. Can they do it again? Hey, we're, I'm looking for Braylon Edwards. I don't, <laughs> I don't see him down is there. Is he down there? You know, maybe this is a little bit different. Lloyd talking to his offense. We welcome those of you who watch Texas pull away from Missouri in the Big 12. Here we are in the Big 10, an important game with unbeaten Michigan State against twice beaten Michigan. Wolverines came in as a rare underdog against their interstate rival, but Chad Henney and the Wolverines put it in the end zone on their first possession. Went up by 14. Then the Spartans scored. The Wolverines again, it became 21-7 before Michigan State tied it. Deadlocked at 24 early in the second half, but then John L. Smith's offense was stalled inside the 10-yard line, and the Wolverines marched down for the go-ahead touchdown, and Chad Henney now 25 at 33 for 250, three touchdowns, and an interception, second down at 10. So that gets you up to date with Jack Aroot and Brent Musburger. 
<laughs> I'm not Gary Daniels. <laughs> Take over here, Gary. <laughs> well, they had to stop the clock because the dog was out on the field. As Henny steps away from baseball and throws it away. The heat was coming. Great coverage that time. That's the first time that Michigan State secondary completely took away any lane for Henny to throw the football to. John Hill with a big uh, smile on his face. He's going to complain a little bit about where that ball was thrown from. He's in the box. He's saying, don't you understand that? That's intentional grounding. <laughs> Third down. Coming down to seven minutes. Big third down for the Spartan defense. Can they hold on the corners? And he is hit. Ball loose. It's going to be ruled. Fumble picked up. Paco's got it. Down the sideline. The big fellow from Samoa. Rumbling for a tying touchdown. Take it home. Big fella does it. Yeah, the big fella. Force Chad Hennedy to pull the ball down one time, and when he pulls it down, big, big Clifton Ryan, number 92, made the play, and Pecco takes it with a convoy of blocks in front of him. They clear the way, and Pecco dives it into the end zone. One time All-American out of the California JC system. I'm going to review it. And he was ranked among the nation's top 50 JUCO players by College Football News. And uh, Lloyd is saying they got to be taking another look at this. Is the arm it. coming forward? Here we are. Big decision. That's going to be a very tough call. Sure is. That, His arm was coming forward, but he was trying not to throw the ball. That's going to be an interesting call. And what's interesting is this crew had a similar call last week turned over. Okay. And the same replay official, Jimmy Augustine, turned it over. And now he faces a similar difficult call upstairs in the replay booth. There's no doubt that Clifton Ryan hits him before he ball goes forward, but the ball continues to go forward after he gets hit. I think Henny, my own opinion is Henny was attempting to wrap the ball up when Ryan hit him, and this will be called a fumble. However, I'm not the official. I got nothing to do with it. The arm definitely was coming forward, as Gary points out. There is no question. But the issue is there is not a tuck rule per That's se correct. in That's, a college game. That is so. the the, it is the, the tuck thing. rule if Absolutely. it answers. That is it. This is the best example of it I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Kenny was not trying to throw the ball. He was trying to stop from throwing the ball. Now, I want you, you're home. You make up your mind. You vote on this. Was Henny trying to tuck it away, or was he still looking for it? You make the call. We're just going to be quiet, and you watch it. Is it indisputable? Seems to me like his hand is going forward when the ball with the ball in his hand. That's what I see. Indisputable now. That's the key word. Is the ball in his hand? Is it moving forward? Uh, I, and and but there is no tuck rule. This is very interesting. I, I frankly I don't know which way this is going to go. I, I really don't. You know, I would not want to be making this call. I mean, either. It's a huge call in the game too. Because Clifton Ryan gets to him when the ball's behind him, but it continues to go forward. There is Jim Augustine, who has the toughest call of the day to make. Take your time, Jimmy. Yeah. It's a big putt. We're not going to any That's place, right. Jimmy. <laughs> this, this is the money call, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Time permitting the thrifty car rental post game report. 
we, and we, I dare say we're eating into that time limit right, right now, John, but uh, this is critical in this football game. Remember, that was third down, so even if it was review, overturned, it would be a field goal situation for Michigan. After further review, it was a fumble. Touchdown. There it is. They are an extra point away. And the fellow from American Samoa has taken it to the house. These Michigan, Michigan State games never end. <laughs> they just keep going. <laughs> we still got clock problems. We've got a lot of stuff to go with. Don't leave this game. <laughs> 74 <laughs> yards. 320 pound defensive lineman. And Kyle Mayer came in to kick that extra point. So the backup kicker deadlocks it at 31, and we'll check carefully who kicks off. What a football game. So Chad Henney hit by Ryan, their best defensive lineman. And Pekka. The 320 pounder from American Samoa takes up and folks watch him hurdle over heart. Look at the big fella. Not exhausted yet. Go over him. Yeah. And Kyle Mayer is out kicking off. And I'm wondering if something happened to John Goss. Didn't kick it off. Oh, it stayed in bounds. Lucky for the uh, Spartans and Mason on the sideline brings it all the way to the 40 yard line. Uh, we'll have Jack Aroot check on uh, the John Goss situation because that's pretty unusual. So we'll take a break and be right back. And we've got another instant classic brewing here in East Lansing. 31 all, sellout crowd. Weather has been beautiful this football weekend here in the Midwest. Chad Henney, the comparison, again, having some problems in the second half. Good field position. On the Wolverine 40-yard line. Hart on first down to the 44. And Gary, our Pacific Life game summary regarding Henning. Well, let's talk about the second half. Of course, this one's to Ecker in the corner of the end zone that uh, set it up. Uh, Jason Avon sure for the touchdown pass. But in the second half, interception that set up a field goal for Michigan State. And, of course, this big fumble. And that time, on second and third down, Michigan State's secondary Force Chad Henney not to be successful. A star is born in East Lansing. Second down. Hart. First down. What a tough runner he's been. And we check in with John in New York. And John Pecco just received polite applause. Only a few noticed he's back on the field. And Hart gets away from him. And makes it to the 41 yard line on that first down run. And Sir Darian Adams, the uh, bandit linebacker for the Spartans, makes the stop. Deadlocked at 31, coming down toward uh, the five-minute mark. You wonder if uh, Michigan might be feeling that uh, Chad Henney's second-half woes because they're riding Hart right now. They're, this is obvious. They've handed this game to Mike Hart and that Michigan offensive line. They're not trying to attack like they were in the first half. Mike Hart is closing in on 200 yards. And remember, a year ago, he ran for 224 yards. Here he comes again, short of the first down. And uh, we get word down below that uh, when Goss missed that field goal, John L. Smith just decided to change kickers, that there's no, no injury situation. And that's why Mayer uh, kicked the extra point and kicked off. And there is Hart with 192 yards, uh, getting a breather on that far side so Kevin Grady on third down and short here for the Wolverines four and a half minutes Grady hangs for the first down see where that ball is spotted this is going to be very very tight if you look at that official it looks to be a little bit short there yeah, it does. Let's see where, where he spotted it. And that's maybe the biggest defense in this Michigan State team from a year ago. They're much deeper, more players up front, and much stouter than they were a year ago at that defensive line. Would you make this four down territory with uh, 408 to go? Well, that is a make good it? question. You know, Lloyd's making a million and a half a year, and I'm not. But I, I think I got to go for this one, to tell you the truth. If you're going to win 
at Michigan State with Drew Stanton. I got to go for it if I'm short by inches. Chad Henney straight ahead by the middle of the line. I think that's what I would do. Sure. Got to go for it. Now, remember, Chad Henney fumbled the quarterback sneak against Notre Dame that might have cost him a football game. Mike Hart back on the field. He's rushed for 192 yards, but when you risk a handoff here. Mike Hart has never fumbled. Once in his career, he's had a fumble. You slow down the play, you allow defensive penetration when you're in short yardage like this. It's much quicker for the quarterback to go right behind the middle of the offensive line. Fumble is not an issue with Hart, never has been. And he's straight ahead for the first down. Well, the IBM Star Watch today, the return of Mike Hart. Well, we talked about it. 200 yard rushers in this football game. It's been done the last two times here. Last year he did it, and now closing in on 200 in this football game. We talked about all this fancy passing. But it usually comes down who can run the ball the best that wins it. Right now, Michigan looks like they're going to try to run the ball and win the game with Hart. Michigan with one timeout remaining. Hart cuts back. Stopped just short of the 30-yard line. The advantage of using Hart and trying to win it that way is the clock continues to run, and you don't give the Spartans too much time. They have all three of their timeouts. And the Wolverine defense is getting a well big rest over there on that far side. Second down for the Wolverines. They need about six yards here. And Hart breaks the first tackle, but he is short of the first down. So it'll be third down. And the clock continues to count down with Thornhill and McKinney. Yeah, McKinney had him by the shirt that time, holding on for all he could as Mike Hart just keeps those legs going and moving and churning. The guy just never stops. Cars, Michigan staff working on the clock, bringing it down. Deadlocked at 31. Mike Hart reminds you of one of those old time backs, the Archie Griffin type guys that just keep running and churning and going. Hart short of the first down. Here comes another fourth down for Michigan. So Carr can decide on the field goal now or elect to go for the first down. This one's going to be a little longer, more than just inches. This is going to be like a half a yard short. Remember, they've only got one timeout remaining on that Michigan side. I'm surprised line. Michigan State doesn't take a timeout here. We're inside of two minutes. They're going to run it down all the way to the end. And it looks like Michigan's going to take a timeout. Hayes Moore replaces the defensive end for State, and there it is. See, if I'm Michigan State there, I don't let them eat that time up right there. A minute and a half to go. And we're deadlocked to 31 in East Lansing. Deadlocked at, uh, at 31. The board now showing officially Michigan with one timeout. They may try to uh, draw him offside with a hard count. Henny's hard count is pretty good. Revis is ready in case they send him out there. Let's see Henny can quarterback sneak. They can do whatever they want here. They're going to run hard for the first down. Breaks for, oh, he was almost headed for the end zone. But Eric Smith, the safety, hanging on. They're inside the 20. And that sets it up now for the Wolverines to use up the clock and move on down for a shorter field. A little goal. too long to try the quarterback sneak. And that Michigan offensive line, that was power O. Lead back, outside guard, pulling around. That's football 101. Michigan football 101 right up. Another 200-yard running game by a player in this game at East Lansing. Looking for more. Michigan State must start using their timeouts right now. I mean, 
They're down toward 105. And John L's defense will be under the gun here. We'll take a timeout. Uh, an option about Michigan, the return of a high scoring wide open first half, and then it settled down here in the second half as Michigan's only score, the touchdown that had him ahead for the time being. The Spartans now, their defense looking at a second down, the clock critical at 105. Massacre the tight end, H back look. Here's Hart again to the 15 yard line. And Pecco, who scored that touchdown on a recovered fumble, making the stop. And the Spartans will use their second time out. In the two big games now, Michigan State against Notre Dame, and now Michigan State in this football game against Michigan, no offensive points in the fourth quarter. That's what allowed Notre Dame to get back in the game and not being able to score on offense in this football game in the second half has allowed Michigan to just control the clock. Well, we have a moment. Let's uh, announce today's Chevrolet players of the game. No question about Michigan. The return of Mike Hart today. And, of course, Pecco, that dramatic touchdown run, and he's played well as a defensive lineman and a 74 yard touchdown a recognition of their effort Chevrolet will make a one thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund here you think anybody in a pile ever yanks that uh, that hair you know uh troy palomalu the strong safety for uh pittsburgh steelers uh once from usc remember him the same way has the same look hey if you can run like that who cares right yes <laughs> He lumbered now, down there pretty good. Now, remember, I, I mean, look at this here. I think you've got to give the ball to Mike Hart again, obviously, right up the middle. No angle, as you pointed out, Michigan State's. Plus, you get the advantage that Mike Hart, one career turnover in his career. So, safety first here. This is third down. This would be the final play before bringing Rebus on. Plows ever closer, and now it'll be time for Garrett Rebus. Matt Gutierrez would be his holder in this situation. Forces Michigan State to use their last time out of the game also. And they'll have, uh, looks around 50 seconds when they get the kickoff. Uh, I'm assuming, of course, I'm ahead of myself here. I'm assuming that Rebus can nail this field goal. Even if he doesn't, that's what they'll have left to work with from the, uh, from the line of scrimmage, so... Time is certainly not going to change. They're without any timeouts left, like Gary said. Of course, in the college game, the first down strike stops the clock momentarily. Now, for those uh, of you who are awaiting the second game of the doubleheader on ABC, we're just wrapping up the Michigan Michigan State battle with Gary Danielson and Jack Aroot. I'm Brett Musburger. And so far today in the red zone, the Wolverines are perfect. Four for four, three touchdowns, and a field goal. And with they want five seconds, for five right now. <laughs> yes, they do, don't they? Tied at 31. A year ago in Ann Arbor, they battled three overtimes. So the junior kicker from Tampa, Florida, has come on here. Be about 27, 28 yards, something like that. Make it 27. Gutierrez, the backup quarterback, checking to see if he's ready. Off to the right. He slipped it to the right. He missed it. 48 seconds to go as Rebus slipped it to the right. We have wide right in a game up in Michigan. Well, I guess you had to jinx him with the Florida comment, didn't you? <laughs> I had to say Tampa, Florida, and that did it. You just have to mention that state, and it's going to be wide right. So you got to anticipate now Michigan State, with time to go, will probe. Can they run it down the field? I think they'll be conservative here and take it to overtime. Teague, he's the running back, Jason Teague, so they put the senior in behind Drew Stanton, the 6'3 junior. Drew Stanton, today 19 of 27 for 287, but like Gary said, inside of a minute, and here they come. Teague to the Breaks it out to the left, and 
and he's down at the 40-yard line. That'll momentarily stop the clock, and that may change their All thinking a little game. bit. All new ball game now. You're going to down the clock quickly. Ground the ball, get it down on the ground, and get out. And now you got three, two more downs to probe. Holy cow. 39 seconds. And there's a penalty flag, a pair of penalty flags thrown by the back judge. Usually that means too many men on the field. That probably... That's against Michigan. Yep, probably too many men on the field. Illegal substitution on the defense, nine, nine, number 94, failed to get off at the snap. Five-yard penalty, repeat, first stop. Just a get-me-to-overtime call right here. This is just get me to overtime. Holy cow, Michigan gets ripped and gouged up the middle, and then an illegal substitution by Michigan. Probably didn't get a guy cross the hash on the play. Gets him five extra yards. From the 45. The trickery goes nowhere. Boy, I don't the, like that uh, call. Freshman at all. ringer, and that is dangerous. Right? Yes, you, that, put, you put that ball down, absolutely. the defense can run into the end zone. Did on not it. like that call at all. Only bad things can happen on that call. Michigan's in a soft zone defense. Michigan State outthought themselves on that one. Seconds are ticking away as we head for overtime again. Illegal formation. Not going to count. It is not going to count. And the penalty flag is thrown. Michigan so. State lined up wrong that time. Boy, Michigan State is going to kick themselves. The Spartans shoot themselves. Remember the field goal when Michigan got an extra four points because Watson came and landed on Revis? This is obvious. Going back. Illegal formation. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. That's a five-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. The clock will start on the ready. The clock will start. You can see on it the right, right there. Movement right there. Training goes back. And then somebody, oh, get up. You had to get up in this point when the ball is snapped. <laughs> Did not cover it up. Training took that basketball size step. And uh, you would think now, folks, that we are headed for overtime for back to back years in this series. T. Barges across midfield as time runs out, and we go to overtime. Michigan and Michigan State. Last year, it took three overtimes to settle this neighborhood battle. We'll be back with overtime number one this year after this message and a word from our ABC station. Or which end of the field we're going to play the first inning. Same thing, I've got his coin, red for head, and a tail. Michigan will call. What are you gonna what are you gonna call? Michigan calls tails. It is a tail. Michigan has won the toss. They have elected to defend. Which end of the field? All right, hang on. Hang on. Michigan over here. Michigan State here. I'll take the football. Michigan State will go on offense. Well, there you First see it. Down. No sudden death. Equal possessions from the 25-yard line starting in the third overtime. Teams must go for the two-point conversion after a touchdown. Overtime. Michigan. Michigan State is next. So it is first and ten from the 25, our first overtime for the Spartans of Michigan State. Teague is the running back. Brown is the wideout number three cutting back. Here is Teague into the heart of the defense. Picking up about four yards, it should be about second and six. Burgess with the stop for the Wolverines. Very big advantage, as we all know, going second in this situation. If you're calling plays right now, Dave Baldwin knows, I want to score, but I must get a field goal. I can't allow Michigan to come back out on the field only needing three points. Much more difficult to call plays going first than going second. Second down and six. Three tight ends are in. Play fake by Stanton, rolling hard to the left. Broken up at the 12-yard line by Leon Hall. 
And Leon Hall read that one all the way. The ball was thrown very late inside. You square out this way. Leon Hall reads the play, knows it's going to the outside. Kind of a weak route that time by Terry Love. Just kind of fades it. Leon Hall almost came up with one. Third down for Drew Stanton here in the first overtime. Hall's double duty. Those of you just joined us. Steve Preston did not play for the Wolverines today because of an injured shoulder. So Hall also has been the punt return man. Third down and six. Can't find a man open. Almost intercepted. Oh my. He oh threw my. it right into the hands of Morgan Trent. Yeah. A young corner who couldn't hang on. And Morgan Trent was moved over a year ago from wide receiver to defense. Might want to know why after that one, because Drew Stanton needs to throw this ball out of bounds. He makes a critical mistake on this play and gets away with it. Can't throw an easier pick than that. John Another. Goss returns to kick the field goal. The holder is Brandon Fields. This a 37 yarder for the Spartans in the first overtime. Goss missed one from the left hash. This a better angle for him. Right over the top of the uh, nope. no good. Yep. It didn't look good as it approached the upright. Nope. And Goss has missed two in a row. And we are tied. And all the Wolverines need now is a field goal to win it. So both kickers, Revis misses one, Goss hooks one before, and now he pushes this one a foot ride to the outside, and uh, Michigan State is finding ways at the end. Michigan's trying to get him back in the game. The Spartans finding ways not to take it. A year ago, of course, it was the heroics of Braylon Edwards, and in the third overtime, he put the Wolverines ahead on that crossing pattern pass from uh, Chad Henney. First and 10 for the Wolverines for the 25. A field goal would end it. Against the soft corner. Avon driven out of bounds at the 19 yard line by Demond Williams, the 5 9 corner on that side. You really have to do that. Michigan State, the Spartans have nine players in the box. One on one to the outside. Can't be any easier than that to just throw the ball out to the outside like that. Second down and four for Henny and the Wolverines. Hart. The 18, now it'll be third down. Coming up for Michigan. There's Revis hoping he gets a second chance here. Goss has failed his second chance. And uh, Revis, they're going to send him out on third down. And in Terribly unusual. No, I like this strategy. Overtime. You I see like, it in really the NFL. Do. Yeah, all I really the time. like this strategy. Michigan's going to have to take a timeout because somebody did a third down field goal try. No, I think Michigan State. Oh, was it really? No, I don't think they expected it. Michigan did not have enough people out there. I'm telling you that. They looked to the bench real quickly. Spartans take a timeout. So they'll talk about this situation. Michigan, a field goal away from a win. Garrett Rivas made one from 20, missed one from 27. This one's going to be put down at the 25, so it'll be a 35-yard field goal. Gutierrez is the holder. For the game, he's got it. Michigan wins for the second year in a row in overtime. And hail to the victors, loud and clear, for Lloyd Carr and a struggling Michigan team. As an underdog, they come to East Lansing and beat a game Michigan State team. ABC Sports Online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Coming up, don't miss the second half. ABC's college football doubleheader. Again, the score, 34-31 Wolverines. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television. So long, everybody.